the Division III Championship, pitting Washington College against the defending champion, Hobart College. Today's game is brought to you by Strohs. From one beer lover to another, Strohs. Welcome to sunny Geneva, New York. Hobart College is the scene, and Hobart is the defending champion. Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Smith, along with Lee Felsmo. And Lee, these two teams, Hobart and Washington College, are no strangers. No stranger indeed. They play each other enough, and it's getting to be a real bitter rivalry. And the rivalry starts at the coaching end. Coach Dave Yurick of Hobart is going for his fifth straight championship, challenged mostly by the Washington team, who now is coached by his greatest player ever, Dave Yurick's greatest player, Terry Corcoran, a great attackman in the late 70s. I talked to Terry Corcoran about his team. His team is basically a defensive team going against one of the great attackmen in the Hobart uh, legacy, uh, one of the Van Arnsdale brothers. Here's what Terry Corcoran had to say about that. Well, the strength of our team is our defense. Uh, we're a very young squad this year, and uh, we build a strong defense, and it's uh, been basically held down by our goalie, Greg Baker. You know, and he's uh, probably the top goalie in the country this year. And today, you know, facing Hobart, we're uh, going to be going against a, against a real strong offensive team. And it's headed right now by Mark Van Arsdale. Mark's a very big attackman, very strong attackman, a uh, very tough fellow to go right to the cage. And he's complimented again with uh, another one, Tom Grimaldi, big All-American attackman, and some outstanding midfielders. You know, he's certainly a great one, but Coach Dave Yurick has his own problems going against the best Division Three goalie that there maybe ever was. He's a three-time All-American, Greg Baker. We're going to watch him warm up now and listen to Dave Yurick's comments about just how he's going to attack this great goalie. Here's, his, here's what he had to say. Challenge today offensively for us is, is to try and generate some offense and, and get the ball by uh, one of the best goalies in the country, Greg Baker. And to do that, we're going to rely on, uh, on getting the ball to different areas of the field and try and shoot with different people, attackmen as well as many, shoot from outside with screens and, and try and work on uh, some individual uh, defensemen behind the cage. It's a balanced team for us this year. We're, we're starting to hit stride offensively, and, and our balance, I hope, will be able to wear them down and be able to take some shots from different areas of the field. Washington College has never beaten Hobart. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment with the starting lineups. I'd sure like another Strohs. No way. Alex? Two cold Strohs. <laughs> Where do you see this? Just open the refrigerator. Just open one bottle. Just open the other. Now he's pouring yours. Now he's pouring mine. Alex, you better be drinking your water. <laughs> <laughs> From one beer lover to another Strohs. Welcome back to Hobart College. Bob Smith along with Lee Felsmo. Now let's take a look at the starting lineups for these two championship contending teams. First of all, Washington College attack. Number 11, Tommy Gaines from Baltimore. Number 17, Walker Taylor from Charlottesville, Virginia. Number 19, Dan Ducar from Canandaigua, New York. They'll be going against a very, very fine defense for Hobart. Number 19, Danny Whalen from Camillus, New York. Number 44, Devin Erickson from Summit, New Jersey. Number 48, Mike Martin from Cortland, New York. Bob, the keys here are going to be Mike Martin for Hobart. He's the co-captain for the team. He's a senior. He gives that uh, starting defense a lot of strength there just by being a senior. Of course, Tommy Gaines up in Washington. He is the leading scorer, leading Washington College with about 64 shots, 26 goals, and 28 assists. He's a real good one. Now look at the midfield matchups for Washington College. Number 15, John Nostrin from Baldwinsville, New York. Number 30, Rick Soul from Horseheads, New York. And number 46, Kevin Giblin from Bingham Binghamton, New York. For Hobart, Facing off, number 20, Pat O'Hara from Camillus, New York. Number 21, Bill Bergen from Camillus, New York. And number 23, Jim Holohan from Centerport, New York. Watch <clears throat> number 23, Jim Holohan. He's a senior, another co-captain from Harbor Fields. First team All-American in midfielder, and he can really put the ball in the hoop. He's got 13 goals in the season so far. He's the third scorer from last year, and he'll go against Rick Soule, the top scorer on the Washington team. Number 30, you see him there in front of you. The strength for Washington College is their defense. Number 12, Rob Luke from Millersville, Maryland. Number 37, Mike Cranston from Falston, Maryland. And number 77, Steve Bevel from Camillus, New York. And they go against the high-scoring Hobart attack. Number 12, Tom Grimaldi from Corning, New York. Number 15, Cal Harris from Appalachian, New York. And number 43, Mark Van Arsdale from here in Geneva, New York. Well, we took, to, took a look at Mark Van Arsdale in the open. And, of course, he is a real uh, shooter for the... Hobart team. He's got 31 goals and 28 assists, so he's the guy that this Washington College defense is going to have to stop. So look for the defense to key on Van Arsdale. He's number 43, and they've got to stop him from shooting. The secret here, of course, could be the goalies. In the goal for Hobart, number two, Chuck Warren from Centerport, New York. 
And for Washington College, number 41, Greg Baker from Crofton, Maryland. His save percentage, 65%. We talked about Greg Baker. He's a three-time All-American. He's got to have a good game if Washington College is going to stay in it. So stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment with the opening face-off, the Division III Championship. What you're doing is illegal. You're trying to hook yourself up to cable without paying for it. But that's illegal. And not very safe, either. Stealing cable service is against the law in every state in the union. So don't think that what you're doing isn't a crime, because it is. Be smart. Call your local cable company to hook you up legally. This message has been brought to you by Group W Satellite Communications and your local cable operator. We're just about set for the opening face-off of the NCAA Division III Lacrosse Championships. Bob Smith along with Lee Felsmo. We're very happy to be here in Geneva, New York. Facing off for Washington College, number 46, Kevin Giblin, and for Hobart College, number 20, Pat O'Hara. This is a packed house. People still waiting to come in here. And if you've ever seen two rabid groups of fans, it's Washington College fans and Hobart fans leave. I'll tell you, before the game even starts, Bob, they're throwing compliments all over the field. Bill Bergen controls the face off momentarily. Now picked off nicely by number 11, Tommy Gaines. Tommy Gaines, 26 goals and 28 assists for Washington College. And they'll have the first offensive opportunity of the evening, afternoon. Excuse me. We're getting pretty excited here ourselves. This may be the best game we've had on all season. You know, Bob, they played earlier in the season. It was a 12-day game. It was a lot closer than the score indicated. Two years ago, they were in the same division championship game and it went to overtime. Dan Ducar puts the ball out to the side. Washington College drops down into a 2-3-1 in front of the goal. The overload to the right. Coming out now, Rick Soule. Soule with a good left hand. Wants to roll in. Comes back. And it's a double team by Mike Martin. The big defenseman for Hobart. And Hobart starts the hitting off right away. Still kept in play. Kevin Giblin's going to pick it up and bring it in. Looking inside. Giblin wants to shoot. Looking for the screen. Comes in. And a low bouncer. And that's knocked down by one of the defensemen. Kicked out to the near side. Washington College maintains possession. Washington College isn't that big. Watches the attackman going against a pretty good-sized defense. They're going to have to keep moving the ball through the air. Walker Taylor with the ball. He picked up there by Devin Arkinson. Now back out front. Washington College rotating off the crease. Big man Rick Soule rolls in and a high shot. Bounces high above the head of Chuck Warren. It'll go out of bounds. But Washington College backs it up very well. Chuck Warren's been tested twice, Bob. There's the crowd. Boy, I tell you, a beautiful day out here. They're out there getting a little bit of sun. But this is a bitter rivalry. Hobart going for five straight. Washington College has given them the toughest test the last two years. Washington College, however, has never beaten Hobart. But we talked to a lot of the players prior to today's game, and they feel this is the day. I think Terry Co uh, Corcoran would love to beat him, having played at Hobart. Kevin Goforth has the ball checked away. A nice over-the-head check. Here comes Hobart. Still no control, being brought down by Sean Fox. Now picked up nicely by one of the Hobart attackmen. A lot of hitting, Bob. The midfielder is on that clear for Washington College. Washington College is a little bit undersized again coming into this game, but they are out to hit. I tell you, they're real fired up. We saw that in the pregame. Listen to this crowd. This sounds like an Army-Navy game. <laughs> Back out front. Hobart cuts down to a 1-4-1. They can shoot from all over the field. It's the razzle-dazzle, run-and-gun kind of offense that you're used to seeing in upstate New York and on Long Island. Cal Harris with the ball. Harris... Almost takes it out of bounds. Drops back in now. He wants his right hand. He comes clean. Beats the double team. He's hit on the head. And the shot bounces high over the goal. That should be a slash. We'll see the call coming up. It will be a slash. And Hobart will have their first extra man opportunity. While we have a moment, let's run down the referees for you. Jack Lowe is from Sea Cliff, New York. Jim Trumbo from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Gray Fallon from Lexington, Virginia. As we're looking at the replay. Watch the drive as Cal Harris comes in here. This senior has the, the smarts to come in and drive the defender until wow. he's doubled. And, of course, on that double, that was a slash right there. He really should have taken the shot earlier because the double, if it had been proper, would have cleaned him off the ball. But a real good move by Cal Harris. Hobart sets up in a 2-3-1 from in front of the goal. They'll work the ball back point behind to Mark Van Arsdale. We'll see as the game goes on, Bob. The, these teams are really a mirror image of each, of each other, as you might expect, because the coach of Washington, of course, played for Hobart. They do a lot of things the same way. The pass off to the side to the overload, and a pass to the score! That goal, Pat O'Hara, by Pat O'Hara, Yali. A nice shot on the wing, that's what you want to do in the extra man. You want to work the overload, keep the ball moving until you get the man that has an open shot. We're going to show it, now watch, here's his setup. Now watch, you see him at the top, O'Hara 
Bush, uh, he walks up on the top of the wing to get open. He comes in and gets a real nice hard battle shot right past <coughs> the goalie for Washington College, the great goalie. Greg Baker? Greg Baker. Now, that hard turf for the hard ground, there's the sideline for Hobart. Bob, you saw in the crease, it's real hard, packed dirt around that area. The ball's going to bounce hard, and if there's any stones in the area, it causes... You know, irregular bouncing, so it'll be tough to read for the goalies. Amazingly, the rest of the grass is very long, much longer than Washington College would like it as we watch the faceoff. We've got 12-14 remaining in the first quarter. It's, excuse me, it's Hobart 1, Washington College nothing. We'll see, it's going to be a loose ball push. The possession will go back over to Hobart. Washington College has to stay in the game in the first half. Obviously, that's what they want to do. They want to win the game, but they are a little bit undersized. They're a speed team, like you said, Bob, with the long grass here. They want to keep the game close and really pour it on the second half of the physical game. Just tuning our way, Hobart in white with orange numerals, Washington College in maroon with white numerals. The Hobart Statesman and the Washington College Showmen. That's not S-H-O-W, it's S-H-O-R-E. Quick feed backside, and a score! Number 12, Tom Grimaldi gets the backside feed as Washington College goes to double team and does not make good on it. And now Hobart leads 2 to nothing, 11.59 remaining here in the first quarter. This is really pretty. Watch how the Hobart player comes in, drives into the right pipe to bring two defenders over, feeds all the way across the field to Tom Grimaldi, right across the crease, and that makes the goalie, Greg Baker, slide across, and when the goalie's moving, he has less of a chance of getting a position to stop the shot. If it appears to me that Baker is playing back in the cage a little bit. He's not out on the edge of the crease, taking away the angle like he should be. He might have been on the edge of the crease that time had he not had to slide, though. He had to come all the way across the face of the crease to get that second shot. Face off controlled by Hobart once again. Getting the face off number 40, Glenn Vivian. Here comes Grimaldi. It's Grimaldi with a G. G-R-I-M-A-L-D-I. Cal Harris goes the feedback out to a cutter. Remember that knows the Hobart team uh, for the years past knows Grimaldi. He had an All-American brother. It's Billy Kerr. Kerr rolling in, beats the double team, feeds back, and they shoot high. That one handled nicely by Greg Baker, his first save of the game. It's the kind of shot you don't want to take against Greg Baker, Bob, because it gives him a chance to get on his feet. That's an easy save to make, and he kind of settles down a little bit. Hobart now in a jump ride. They're putting a lot of pressure on Washington College. They have a two in Washington College with a two-on-one on the near side, a man open in the middle, and they should clear the ball easily now. Number 46, Kevin Giblin brings it across. Leaf, it appears to me Hobart's running a lot more midfields than Washington College, even here in the early going. Talking to uh, Coach Dave York, he gives you a roster. He tells about three regular midfields, a long sticks midfield, and he plays about two different units on attack and defense. So he really does use the whole roster. John Nostrand rolls in, feeds across, and they bounce it high over top of the cage. And it looks like Washington College has not gotten the feel of that hard surface in front of the goal just yet. The field will be, of course, newer to them. They're up here, the visiting team. But that can be a problem. We mentioned it, that hard dirt. Just see it right there underneath the goalie, Chuck Warren. Get some pebbles, some dirt in there, some irregular surfaces. It's going to take some funny bounces. Back out front now. Pat O'Hara. Excuse me, that's uh, number 30, Rick Soule. Back over to Tommy Gaines. Washington College dropping two men down in the crease, rotating off the crease, pulling a man back out as they put the ball behind, looking to feed the cutter coming off the crease. Feed backside, and a nice save in there by Chuck Warren. That was a beautiful save by Chuck Warren. Tommy Gaines was on the back door. That was called a backdoor cut. He took the feed right on the pipe, and somehow Chuck Warren rejected that shot. Stay on, Ricky, stay on. A little now, confusion on the sideline, Bob. Pass. Yeah, I think they were trying to substitute on the fly in the middle of that clear, and that created problems for him. Here comes Rick Soule. Soule with a good hard right-handed shot. Looks the feed backside. He takes away his own angle. Now comes back out front. Slips down that long grass. Uh, he had a shot there. He should have taken the shot. You know, you heard him yelling on the sideline, Ricky, stay on, Ricky, stay on. He's a little tired, but he had a right-handed shot there. He should have taken. Now, Washington College uh, has a defenseman caught down on the offensive end of the field. Shot off the pipe. Tam taken by Dan Ducar there. Good shot from behind the goal. Boy, Ducar would like to have that shot back. He's only a freshman. That's the problem, or not the problem, but the concern of uh, Terry Corcoran, the beginning of the year was the attack. They graduated most of their top scorers. The attack is very young. Angered by Tommy Gaines, he's only a sophomore. They've got Walker Taylor, a junior, then Dan Ducar. You just saw shoot. He's only a freshman. Washington College starts their offense from back in the park. There's corner. a replay. Obviously, Ducar, nice hard bouncer that took the pipe. Two more inches, that would have been a goal. Back to live action. Back out front to Rick Coat. 
Code quickly over to Kevin Goforth and Goforth over to Russ Look. Look driving in. This is the second midfield unit for Washington College. And you can see a lot of defensive pressure being put on by Hobart as they are playing Washington College all over the field, out beyond the top of the box. And it results in a turnover. Hobart gets the ball back. That was the long sticks unit that came in, Bob. They had six defensive players on the field for Hobart, and he does, Coach Dave York, it likes to press on defense. He likes to give a lot of pressure, dictate what that other offense is going to do. Quick feed up now to Devin Arkison. Devin gives it back now. He's still standing alone on the corner. He can clear the ball across easily once he gets it back. He's got it. Nice roll. Now a little bit of trouble. Nice check laid in there by Washington College. Good hustle on the sideline. Good shot from our sideline camera. Bob, you watch these long sticks defensemen try to clear the ball. You might wonder to yourself, you know, why do some players have long sticks? Why do some of them have short sticks? Halftime, we're going to have a chance to take a look at the sticks and explain to our viewers just why they use a short stick in some instances and a long stick in others. Future Hobart player, we just caught a shot of there, backing up the goal. Now back out front quickly. Hobart with the ball. Washington College has gotten themselves in trouble sliding. Let's see if they quit sliding. They're double teaming a lot early on, and uh, Hobart's taking advantage of it. Billy Bergen feeds into uh, Pat O'Hara, I think was a lot further from the goal than he realized. Grimaldi rolls in. Double team, the knock down. And we have a call coming up. I did not see. It might have been a crease violation. It will be a crease violation, and Washington College will gain possession. If you don't have the ball, you can't go in that crease area. That's a violation. It goes back to the defense. If you have the ball on defense, you can kind of... Or if you have the ball as a goalie or a defense, you can run through the crease. Here's it. Here is again the shot. The ball got kind of hung up in the attackman's stick, and it kind of hit right in the ground, bounced up. Now watch right there in the crease area. You see the attackman drive in. Watch his feet. He steps on the line. That's in the crease area, and the ball goes over to Washington College. Once again, Hobart in a press ride. Now they drop off the press ride. They back drop back in the zone with a chaser, and Washington College clears the ball across the midfield line. Here comes Sol. Sol knocked down. They've got a two and one coming in. Quick feet inside, and a great save as, as Chuck Warren takes away the angle. And the ball goes out of bounds, but we'll go back over to Washington College, and Chuck Warren stood tall there, all five feet, eight inches of him. Boy, that was a beautiful play all the way through. You know who set it up was Sol. Ricky Sol came down, was double team. That's what you want to do in a fast break. You want to draw another man. He drew the double team, fell flat, got a nice check on him, but he was falling flat on his stomach, got the shot off still, or the pass off, and the pass came down, and uh, they missed the goal with a nice save by Chuck Warren. Seven minutes and 43 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. It's Hobart 2, Washington College nothing. Winning now while wow. Hobart sets up their clear. They'll go over to Chuck Warren. Chuck Warren, five feet, eight inches tall, 140 pounds. We, we had him on, uh, of course, in our open, and he looks like he's about 12 years old. Lee. He does look young, but you know, the Washington College team looks young, so there's a lot of young boys out there, a lot of young, team, a lot of young important members of both teams. Now, Washington College in the press ride. They have to slide quickly. Hobart with the two and one here on the, near, on the far side of the field. They get the ball cleared up quickly. Scott Zadel brings it in. They try to feed inside. Now they feed backside. And a good save by, uh, excuse me, by Chuck, by Greg Baker. Well, that was a fantastic save by Greg Baker. You know, Washington's getting themselves in trouble. Look at this, Bob. Fast break. Big feed out front. And a backside feed. And a man is nailed there. That's Walker Taylor who took the big hit. He was cleaned out, and here comes Hobart. Had a good play once again by Baker as he comes out and cuts down that long pass. It'll go out of bounds, and we'll get the call. It'll go back over to Hobart, we believe. The referee asking the uh, field judge, he's going to call a face -off. I wish we had time to take a look at both those plays on either end of the field because they were exceptional plays on both ends. Greg Baker, you saw him charge out and knock down that feed. Any great goalie that has confidence is going to do that. We'll take a look at it right now. Watch, it's too long a pass. Baker reads it. Baker comes charging out of the goal and knocks it down. Otherwise, that guy's got a point-blank shot. Look at Baker. Comes about 10 yards off the crease, knocks that thing down, and that will be a face-off on the sideline. Of course, he misses it. It's a goal. He misses it. He's <laughs> in trouble. But you know what? He's in trouble anyway, so he figures he might as well go out and try to dictate the action. Face-off on the sideline. The officials could not be uh, sure who gave impetus to the ball as it went out of bounds. Here comes Hobart. Cal Harris. Harris has everything checked away from that time. And an outstanding check by Mike Cranston. Cranston picks it up. Almost overthrows Baker. Now Baker moves the ball quickly. A lot of trouble here. Ramondi looks back. And a score. 
The ball into to Cal Harris on the loose ball situation that Hobart converts into a goal. They lead three to nothing. We've got 6.20 remaining here in the first quarter. And this will be a timeout call for Washington College. Washington College has given away a few goals, and that's what Terry Corcoran's taking the timeout for right now. He knows his team could be in this, except for a couple mistakes. It's their aggressiveness that's causing mistakes. Watch Baker. He feels the pressure by the riding attack. He kind of falls away and throws against the grain. Now, the defenseman, number 22, should be picking that up. That's locked. He misses it, and that's when they're in trouble. Hobart has the presence to make a feed inside to Cal Harris. Cal Harris, knowing that Greg Baker didn't have any position at all, just gave a little fake low and went high. 6.20 left, Bob, and I tell you right now, good time out by Terry Corcoran because he's got to stop that team from uh, getting too far ahead before his team can get their feet underneath him. Hey, don't forget, Home Team Sports brings you Orioles Report, The Pennant Chase. This evening at 6 p.m., host Tom Davis looks at the week in Major League Baseball. That's right, here on to Home Team Sports, the channel you cheer for. Orioles, of course, won last night, but so did Detroit, so everything stays the same. Well, Detroit well. is smoking, no question about it. But <laughs> 30 of 35. Everybody's confident the Orioles will be in it. They're going to play exciting baseball through the end, and we all know that September is their month. And, of course, the Orioles have not played Detroit yet. Beautiful shot uh, of a lovely campus and a lovely area of the United States. The Finger Lakes area of Upper New York State. Take a look and see if Washington College, look at that crowd. They're enjoying themselves today. Great lacrosse. Washington College, I'm impressed so far. Really, the only reason that Hobart's taking advantage of them, they're a little more seasoned on attack. And if they make a mistake, Washington College, that is, Hobart is right there to pick that up and make a goal out of it. Washington College is hustling, Bob. They're double teaming, and that's where they may be making a mistake. They're double teaming a lot on this Hobart experienced attack. Facing off once again uh, for Washington College will be Kevin Giblin. He doesn't get it, rolls out to the side. Still in the possession, and uh, should be an out-of-bounds call, and does go against Hobart. Billy Kerr using too much of the field. Possession goes over to Washington College. We'll see if Hobart moves into a press ride once again. Now we look back, and they're dropping back in a zone. Trap on the near side of the field, and one chaser. Now they've come down and put a little more pressure on with Grimaldi. You know, the first time they met Bob, one of the biggest differences in the game was one extra man, Washington College, could not convert. They were 0 for 7. Hobart was 3 for 6. And the other thing they couldn't do was clear. Steve Bevel takes it over nicely. Gets it off quickly to Tommy Gaines. Gaines, uh, we're getting a lot of pressure. Looks for help. Pulls it back towards the middle of the field. And Rick Soule picks it off. Now to Kevin Giblin. Giblin was having some problems. Now over to Rick Soule again. Soule's got good wheels. He can come across the top of that box. He's being driven out by a long stick, and as you can see, six long sticks, six long defensive sticks in the game for Hobart. Back to Walker Taylor. Taylor loses his man, but draws a double team. They try to feed backside. Sol comes in, wants to shoot, and a low bouncer knocked down by one of the defensemen in the cage along with Chuck Warren. Warren with a quick outlet pass up to Dan Whalen, and here comes Hobart. Hobart's attack, very active. As you'll see, the goalies look at it. That's Ricky Soule coming back and breaking that fast breakup. He does have the good wheels you talked about. Here comes Kerr. Kerr rolls in. Has an angle taken away. Backed up nicely by Washington College. Quick outlet pass. Almost overthrown. They're throwing a lot of long passes. It's a very windy day. And as you know, Lee, from having played the game, it's tough to make a pass over 15 or 20 yards and the wind's blowing like it is here. I think they're also their inexperience is really showing right now. They're getting a little more settled down. For a championship game, a lot of these young guys are a little jittery. Clearing is basically composure. They're getting their feet on the ground now. I think they're going to be in this game. Here's Cal Harris. He tries to feed point behind. Back out to Tommy Gaines. We've got 4.27 remaining in the first quarter. It's Hobart 3, Washington College nothing. Quick feed inside to a cutter. Backed up by John Nostrand. Nostrand comes and fires. And another save in the air by Warren. Talk about the angle, Bob. Chuck Warren made a beautiful cut down the end. You talk about sitting high in the box. Chuck Warren came out about six yards to pick it up, but then because he was so high cutting down the angle, he came back in the crease, and that's a penalty. In and out called. Washington College will retain possession. Take a look at it. Oh, watch how high he is. See him pick it up? Coming out high like that, it cuts down the angle, so that's good for that part of it, but then he comes back into the crease for protection. You can't do that. You can run back in and out all day long. You have a lot of, a lot of trouble uh, getting rid of the ball. Now back to Tommy Gaines. Gaines looks back out front. Gives it off out front. Number 38, Rush Look. He fires off the leg of one of the defensemen. And here comes Hobart. Fast break set up. But now the defenseman uh, gives off to the side. 
to Mark Van Arsdale, and he'll hold hold play up momentarily while they make a substitution of the fly with Jim Holohan. Here comes Holohan rolling in. Once his left. Double team, triple team. Has the ball checked away into Billy Bergen. Any reason for Bergen to have uh, different color pants, Leaf? Only his other ones weren't clean. He's the only Agatha. <laughs> Back to Van Arsdale. Van Arsdale looking out front, puts it on the side. He'll board in a 1 3 2. Grimaldi boring in. Has the ball checked away. Washington College defense is the best part of their game. And you're not going to go to the cage one on one with them too often. Steve Bevel over to Baker. And they bring it up quickly to Kevin Goforth. Go forth, Kevin, as he brings it across the midfield line. You know, the defense being the strength of the team, Bob, sometimes you have a chance or, or, or a tendency to overcompensate. I think that's what they've done in the early part of the game. There's only two minutes left, or three minutes, two minutes, 50 seconds, and they tried to carry the load too much, double teaming, and that's left openings for Hobart. Part of the problem Washington College is having in clearing the ball is they're not getting a lot of help from their attack. The attack is going to have to come out, break to the ball, help out in the clear once it comes across the midfield line or when it gets near the midfield line even. And that's, uh, that's been a problem. Washington College is having the ball checked away. There's a couple good reasons to go to college right there. <laughs> Once again, the long grass takes its toll. There's a flag down. We look up and we count off sides, I think, against Washington College. So possession should go over to Hobart. That'll be a technical foul. There was possession. So Hobart should be extra for 30 seconds. Looking now as a uh, play is being called. And Hobart will be extra for 30 seconds as Washington College goes offside. There's the big bass drum. <laughs> Drumming up support, right, Lee? That's right. I think Hobart has all the support they need here. No question about that. Pretty rowdy, rowdy crowd, or supportive crowd, I should say. Hobart with their second extra man opportunity. Show Hobart. Show, of course, meaning Eastern Show of Maryland. Once again, uh, now Hobart sets up this time in a 3-3. Three, three, everybody in front of the cage. They'll cut into a 1-4-1. One, they like to use this to get two or three cuts off it, maybe get a shot up top. They cut Van Arsdale back down behind the goal. They're going to drop down to a 1-4-1. One one. Now they get to the wing. Van Arsdale comes forward, rolls back in his double team, tries to push it in the goal, and he'll go in the crease, I'm sure. We'll see the call. It will be a crease violation, and that's not what you want to do an extra man, is uh, take it one-on-one -on -one against three defenders. Absolutely not. You want to come in, drive in to where you draw a man, draw the defense towards you, and if you move the ball fast enough, the backside of wherever the ball is, the backside is wide open because you had that man advantage. That time, Van Arsdale tried to take it upon himself. He had the crease too tight, and he got hammered by two defensemen. 221 remaining here in the first quarter. It's been all Hobart. They lead three to nothing. Here comes Rick Saul. He's going to try to wheel it across the midfield line. He's trapped on the side. Outruns two defenders. But he, once again, he's not getting any help from the attack. He's trapped. The attackmen are running away from him. They're trying to clear out. I know, but one of them's got to stay close to get a pass. You see what happens. He has the ball checked away. You've got to have a couple of men. You've got to clear out so your man can't double team. But you also have to be, have to be in proximity to get a pass. And that's, that's right. what happened. Saul got trapped. As soon as he gets across the midfield line, he should get plenty of help. You're right, Bob. If tax should come up, and the midfield should settle down. If he's being chased by a defenseman, that defenseman doesn't want to stay there too long. So if you move the ball once in the air, that defenseman will drop off and go back to where he belongs. Putting now Washington College in a, back in his own ride. Quick pass to a cutting midi coming down. Dave Ralph, number 31. Good shot from our end zone camera. As we'll see the full pan of the field. Now you saw, Hobart we just clear. talked about that, excuse me, Bob, but yeah. Hobart, when they brought it across the midfield stripe, they settled it down right there, got their, everybody settled in the right positions, and took their time. Here comes Tommy Rosa. He feeds inside. The shot bounces off the top of one of the sticks. A refeed, reload, and reshoot. Well, that's why Greg Baker's All-American. Did you see that? Tremendous. And it might be an unsportsmanlike penalty on the inside of the crease. Let's see what the call is. Uh, Hobart's cheering, so... Uh, I saw a swinging stick in there. It looked like some tempers got a little bit hot. And but Greg Baker, boy, he took a shot. Watch this. Watch the feet of the crease. Now, Baker's positioned beautifully, and somehow Hobart picks it out of the crowd and fires a left-hander, and Baker, boom, rejects it right there. Now, watch the middle. You'll see somebody swing. Watch 23. If we advance a little farther, you'll see that stick come across. Boom. Now, that got some tempers flaring. Now, watch. You'll get another stick in here. Boom, right there. Right. Holy behind. Yeah. Number That's 77, it. Steve Bevel. Steve Bevel. There's Terry Corker talking to his defense. He's called for the slash, and Hobart will have their third extra man opportunity. I have him 0 for 3, Leaf. I might have missed one in there, but I believe Hobart 0 for 3 on extra man. Hobart scored the sec uh, first goal of the game on extra man. Okay, they're 1 for that 3 at this point. That was Tyler Hare. 
On extra man offense throughout the season, Hobart, uh, not too sensational, 28% success rate. And the good teams uh, usually bounce up a little higher to 35%. Well, you know, they were 50% in the last meeting of these two teams. And again, Washington College didn't score any on seven tries. That was the difference. John Holhan, number 23. They have a cutter down inside. Bergen, who just cut the seam. He gets the feed. He scores the goal. Billy Bergen. Billy Bergen, he's setting some trends here in, in, in uniform wear. And he got a goal there that the team loves. Crowd going crazy. He's a quick, real scrappy little mid. He's got 12 goals on the year, seven assists from Camillus, New York. Now watch, he, watch him come in on the left here. That'll be Bergen sneaking in. He, the, the play starts up top, comes back across the green, but now he looks to the crease where Bergen is. Bergen's wide open and pokes it right by the good goalie, Greg Baker. We've got a minute and 13 seconds remaining here in the first quarter, and it's Hobart four, Washington College nothing. There'll be a uh, loose ball hold. Possession will go over to Washington College. You know, the extra man, Bob, that was a well-conceived play. We don't see enough of that anymore, it seems, but if you move the ball fast on extra man and get the defense sliding, of course, you see a lot of zones these, these days. That defense is rotating. You're going to hit an open man sooner or later, and he gets the good shot. Hobart sideline. Billy Bergen taking a well-deserved rest. Now, Washington College, once again, Hobart playing Washington College line to line. You'll see them pick up people as soon as they get possession of the ball, regardless of the position on the field. Rick Soule getting a lot of heat there. Gives it off to Walker Taylor. Look at Walker Taylor, boy, 5'5", 150. Just another example of good athletes being able to play lacrosse. You don't have to be a giant to play this game. You need coordination and speed and heart. And these young men all have it. Here comes Soule, Soule looking for help. Put it back behind to Tommy Gaines. Gaines feeds out front. And a high, hard shot. A good shot taken there by John Nostrand. Over top of the cage. We saw Tommy Gaines back there. You know, he's indicative of that Washington team. Nothing great and flashy. Real consistent. He's got 54 points on 26 goals, 20 assists. Now watch this shot come real high as Chuck Warren bounces. Look how far Chuck Warren is off the crease. He's about 10 yards out. He's outside his own crease area. He's really cutting the angle down. He must be anticipating, Bob, that they're going to take a lot of shots high. We've got an inbounds play working here for Washington College. They stack four men in front and they break them off. And a low bounce pass. I'm not quite sure what that was all about. Tommy Gaines bounced one and uh, might have had a stick laid in there. Yeah, Tommy was trying to, he came around uh, the one-on-one -on -one play, didn't get the shot he wanted, so he wanted to go behind the goal to Walker Taylor. And of course, the good check on him by number 35 on the uh, Hobart team took him out of the play. That's Kevin Zick, Zick, Zitch, Zitch, Zitch. How do you say that? Z-Y-C-H. Kevin Zitch. No problem. <laughs> No problem. We've got 17 seconds remaining and counting down here in the first quarter. And as we say, it's been all Hobart. They lead four to nothing. Quick outlet pass up, not handled by the big defense stick of number 32, J.C. Stein. Manages to recover. They get it off and they shoot inside knowing the clock's running down. And of course, uh, that one hand handled easily by Greg Baker. So we played 15 minutes here in the Division III Championship. And the score is Hobart four, Washington College nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. Team Sports is Home Team Baseball. Tuesday night, live and exclusive from Oakland Alameda County Coliseum, the Orioles battle the Oakland A's. Catch all the excitement of Orioles magic live Tuesday night at 10.30 when the O's meet the A's. You'll see the best in Home Team Baseball right here on Home Team Sports, the channel you cheer for. Catch you anything, Riley? Yeah, I caught this granddaddy of a fish. But when I got him in the boat, he says, I'll give you three wishes if you throw me back. A talking fish? Well, it was hot. I was thirsty, so I wished for a nice cold Stroh's beer. And there it was. Mmm. Tasted so good, I wished for another one. Two wishes, two Stroh's. And what'd you do with the third wish? Hey, what'd I forget my friends? From one beer lover to another, Stroh's. Welcome back to Geneva, New York, and you can see Hobart has been taking everything they can get from Washington College, and they lead four to nothing. Uh, Leaf, I was a little surprised myself. You can see the wind blowing there. It is uh, playing havoc with some of our upper camera locations. Occasionally you'll see a little bit of wobble. It's not in your set. It's in our cameras because of the about 35 mile an hour winds blowing here. Well, I don't think the score is indicative of, of really what's happening here. Washington College has had some bad breaks. They overplayed. They played a little too aggressively early on. They settled down, and then they had some shots that were just 
you know, beautiful saves by Chuck Warren and some balls that just actually hit the pipe. So with a little bit of luck, it could be 4-3, 4-2. Now Hobart going on offense. You know, Bob, if you check the score by quarters for the whole season, Washington College's best quarter is the second quarter. And you can bet today they hope it is too. They'll need it. Now waiting as Hobart sets up a play. They have a three-man stack in front of the cage. As they raise the ball back out front. Joe Regan and Billy Kerr. And we're going to see a call coming up. Warding off, warding off. What happened is when you're playing defense against the man with the ball, if he uses a part of his body to push away your attempt to dislodge the ball, that's warding off. He can protect his stick if he holds it there, but if he starts pushing your stick away, that's warding off and possession goes over to the other team. See what kind of a ride Hobart comes up with here. They're going to have a jump ride again. And they drop back and they have just one chaser. That's uh, number 26, Joe Regan. And Regan, he'll have tired legs if he has to run uh, back and forth across the field all day long as the chaser on the ride. Now they trap on the near far side of the field. Washington College eludes the trap. Has the ball knocked down, however, on an errant pass intended, excuse me, for Kevin Giblin. That's been Washington College's failing the last time they met, and today they're not doing too well either. They get the ball across the mid stripe, but then they've got to settle it down and get an open man. They need that help you were talking about, Bob, from the attack. Now Hobart will lob the ball way out front. Number 27, Marty Wood. You know, midfield now with number 25, Billy Kerr. Here the cadets in the, in the stands cheering. <laughs> they love the lacrosse up here. Once again, the long grass uh, causes one of the players to slip down, but he recovers nicely. Marty Wood. Wood driving in, looking for an opening. Feeds it off to the side. And that pass uh, we backed up and kept in play by Joe Regan. Tippy toes to the edge. Gets it off to Mark Van Arsdale. Back to Regan. Regan coming front. 22 goals, 9 assists, Joe Regan. Regan plays the fourth man on the attack, but he actually is in the top three. Feed inside. Once again, they go back. That's back, back of the goal, not a score. It's on the back of the net. And Greg Baker must gain control. Gives it out to the far side. That's a nice play against this Washington College team, Bob, because they're sliding so much and helping out on defense. If you press the, the plane of the goal, when you get the slide, dish it off the back door, you're going to get some shots. Kevin Giblin bringing it up. Over to Dan Ducar. Ducar, 16 goals and one assist. Kind of a selfish guy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> or a creaseman. Right, probably that's the latter of the truth. Now over to John Nostrand. Nostrand driving in. He, he can go either hand. Shoots, and the save knocked down inside. Never got to uh, right to Warren. And we're going to see a crease violation coming up once again. What Washington College set up then, Bob, was a screen. They had a play set up. was a one-on-one -on -one out in front. Illegal procedure being called against Hobart, and I missed that, but uh, Let's Washington like a, College will retain possession. See if they set that up again, at least, if not this, uh, this series. Here again, they set a one-on-one -on -one up top. Now watch, on the crease, you've got two attackmen trying to screen the shot. Now the ball comes in, Tommy Gaines jumps up in the air. We saw him come down. Those two men right there, 11, um, Tommy Gaines and 45, they jump up, screen the goalie from seeing the shot. Hopefully it goes in. Comes Walker Taylor. Taylor looking back out front with the ball point behind. Really a size mismatch there, but Taylor drops inside. He's knocked down on a good backup. Warren with the ball. He'll get it out to the side quickly. Hobart will look for the long outlet pass. You talk about guts. Walker Taylor, holy smokes. All 150 pounds in there, pounding on his defenseman, trying to get that goal. Once again, an errant pass coming across the top of the box, picked up nicely by Bevel. But his pass is uh, the honors return. Still no control. And now Washington College finally gets possession. Hobart back in the hole very, very quickly. No fast break. <laughs> and a trailing mini comes in and really dislodges the ball. Number 20, Pat O'Hara. I'll tell you what, Coach Corcoran is really furious about that lack of intensity on the attack. Let's see if he makes a substitution. They had to clear and they just didn't hustle enough and look around. They weren't aware. There comes Cal Harris. Feeds backside. Handled a little late by Joe Regan. Regan fields back out front to O'Hara. Still no control. Back over to Hobart. Uh, almost offside, but close. They're going to call the offside as O'Hara jumped back at the last second. So possession will go over to Washington. Yeah, that was a good call. Pat O'Hara, number 20 in the midfield. He was on the midfield stripe, tried to get back in time, but he fell back and put his hand over. And there's the score. Four to nothing Hobart if you just joined us in the second quarter with only 11 minutes and 17 seconds to go in the half. Hobart in white, jerseys, and Washington College in maroon.
Now, once again, pressure being put on all over the field by Hobart. Dan Ducar trying to drive in. Ducar is going to need a little help. He's about to get double teamed. Tries to beat it. Turns, and another great save by Chuck Warren. Warren with a quick outlet pass to Dan Whalen. Whalen stops just short of coming across the midfield line as they get uh, some long sticks out and short sticks in. Here comes Billy Bergen. Back to Grimaldi. Grimaldi picked up by Bevel. Tries to beat the double team of Baker. Doesn't do it. Ball picked up nicely inside, snared by Washington College midfielder, but still no control. That'll we'll be a trip. Call is going to be. It's going to be a trip. You're right, Lee. You saw Grimaldi take the ball that time. He's a six-foot junior. He's the second-team All-American, the only All-American on the attack unit. But it's Ben Van Arsdale that's really carrying the team. He's got 59 points. I think Grimaldi's pushing a little bit. You know, sometimes you get that that accolade being an All-American. You start wearing that collar. You get you call the you get the best defenseman on the opposite team playing you week in week out and you feel like you have to produce. Sometimes some players end up taking the pressure and not playing as well. Now watch the trip come up here. Number 35 is carrying the ball right there. He was shoved off his pins and the stick accidentally tripped him below the knee. That means they'll get a free clear in their end of the field. Matter of fact, possession that puts a man in the box. Washington College has their first extra man play. A few weeks, the young man who is tripped. Washington College now sets up in the 2-3-1. Gaines looks out front. They've got an open man. Soul, he fires wide of the cage. Ooh, nice play. They had two men starting up top. They were in a 2-3-1. They both cut down, drawing the defense in, and then they kicked it out top for a shot. You haven't seen a penalty clock before. There it is, ticking down. 30 seconds. Once again, Washington College cutting two men down to the crease. Trying to draw the double team. They go back out top to Sol. He beats his man. Hits, he's hitting the head. That'll be a slash. And the goal is scored, but the goal oh, will not huh. be allowed. I say it was called. Washington College is snake bitten today. They've had an opportunity to score two, three goals. Right there, you have a delayed penalty. The ball came in. Sol drove in, dished it off. And in the opinion of the referee, the ball is going away from the goal, and they call it another penalty. Watch this. The ball comes in with Sol. The ball's just up top. The defense is pulled in. They have to come out hard to play him. They go over the head and catch his head and the helmet. That's a slash right there. You cannot hit the face mask, head, or neck. So now watch. He drives past this. We didn't see it. But he comes in, dishes it off for a shot. The ball went in, but the whistle had blown before the goal. So still no score, but there's still a man up. Now they're down two men. Well, Hobart down two men. And they'll be served for about another 15 seconds. Good move and a great save by Warren as he snuffs Tommy Gaines. And then the rebound, Gaines puts it in. And Washington College has their first score. I tell you, lost me on that, Bob. I'm not sure it was Gaines, but it was somebody on the crease. Gaines made a nice move. When you're two men down, you stay in a tight zone defense. Tommy Gaines knew that. That's why he drove the pipe and waited for somebody to play him. Nobody played him, so he came around, took a shot. Chucky Reagan made a great save, but then he just did Now watch, there's the first shot. Tommy Gaines missed it. Now it comes out. Yeah, it's Gaines that follows the shot. He follows his own shot and bats it in. Real heads-up ball there. Nine minutes and 31 seconds remaining in the first half. It's Hobart four, Washington College one. I'll tell you, they were snake bitten, but they finally got one on the board, and that could unloose him. Kevin Giblin controls the faceoff. Gives it off quickly to Dan Ducar. Now back to Giblin. Giblin goes point behind. They feed out backside. Now back out the top of the box. And they overthrow Giblin. That's been hooked up by Hobart. Hobart rolling in 2-1-1 uh, if they can gain possession. But it uh, takes a little bit of time to get the ball back. And Washington College gets in on defense. Here comes Tom Grimaldi. I tell you, you should watch Terry Corker when the ball comes up the field close to him, Bob. I swear to God, if he had a stick in his hand, he'd be on that field in about two seconds. Very intense man when he played here. Outstanding attackman. The double team uh, dislodges the ball. Here comes Greg Baker. Looks for a quick outlet pass. Now back to Baker. Baker will set it up. He'll take it back to the far side of the field or back to the center of the field. All right, this is a phase of their game they've got to work on. They've got to make the successful clear. They've had an okay time getting to the midfield strike, but they can't get it across farther than that. And we're noticing now that the attackmen are way down in the corners, staying pretty much out of the clear entirely. They, it's okay to start back there, but once the ball gets to the midfield, they should come up and help out. If Washington College can make the 60-yard pass, they've got two attackmen open in the corners. In fact, uh, now, they have two men very wide open in the corners and no defenseman playing, and I'm sure they'll pick that up. We'll see what this call is going to be. It's going to be a push, we believe. We'll see what the call is. 
Elbow to the head. Illegal check, one minute. You heard that very clearly on our sideline, Mike. Your illegal check, one minute. So Washington College will have another extra man opportunity. Terry Corkin likes that a lot because now he gets to sit in his extra man play. He just talked to Tommy Gaines. He's going to go behind. The man behind, in this case, he's the quarterback. Now watch the play here. It's the illegal check. Watch number 15 come in. Now here he is in the left of your screen. Watch the high elbow. Right up to the head. No, sir, you don't have to do that. You go for the body, anything up to the head delivered with a stick or the arm, that's illegal. Illegal check, that'll be good for a minute. Washington College has a chance to break it down to four to two with eight minutes left in the halftime. That's not even a legal check in football. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you know, we want to remind all the lacrosse fans that are watching this great game that home team sports is home team lacrosse. Tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock, live and exclusive, it's the Division I lacrosse semifinal between North Carolina and Johns Hopkins. And let me tell you, those two teams never play a dull game. Tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock, you'll see the best in home team lacrosse right here on home team sports, the channel you cheer for. And, of course, we saw North Carolina uh, do the job on Virginia Wednesday night. They beat them 11-2, and they were very, very impressive Over doing the, it. They are really something. They're, both those teams played drag-out games year in and year out. Those two teams are vying for the championship. <laughs> is, that, is that a friend of yours from Saudi Arabia there, Lee? Yes, he Up comes down corner. to just give gas for the truck. <laughs> the cameras get here. He brings in. As you watch the extra man play, Tommy Gaines behind. It's in a 2-3-1. He'll be the quarterback. The ball will go back to him. There'll be two cutters coming through. He'll look the cutters over and then go up top for the shot. Soul cranks and a nice save by Warren. That's the shot they want. They have a good screen in there. And Rick Soul's getting off good shots. But uh, Chucky Warren's doing an outstanding job in the cage. Big, fluffy, cumulus clouds playing havoc with our cameras here. Some of them are uh, different than Kimmy. The pass from rolling in. He wants to shoot. And a great save by Baker. Number 10, Sean Fox, came in that time. But Baker had that one right all the way. Here comes Washington College. They're still extra. And once again, the uh, pressing the ball down, they throw it away. Washington College could have settled that time. They had the extra man situation. No need to rush. Certainly is a bad break. To get the ball down there on a fast break, you've got to make the crisp pass. The play was set up beautifully by Rick Cody. He came down for caught. He made the nice pass, or had the t chance to make the nice pass and set up the fast break. Didn't get it. Seven minutes and 17 seconds remaining here in the first half of the Division Three Championship coming to you live from Geneva, New York. Washington had a good opportunity to get back in the game. 4-2, they missed it. They had an extra man. Long clearing pass up the field to Tom Euchre. They feed across. And a shot knocked down before it ever gets to the goal. Still no control. Grimaldi has it checked away. We watch. Uh, there's not much you can comment on this. <laughs> Still no control. And uh, somebody's going to kick it out of bounds, and the referees like that because they can rule possession and uh, avoid having to watch the ball being kicked around further. Possession will go over to Washington College. I'll tell you what, those kind of situations give coaches gray hairs. Dave York's not happy about that. When you see a big melee like that, when there's 15 guys, 10 guys standing around, uh, standing around what you want to do is come in and call the, either the ball or the man. If you're not trying to get the ball, the guy next to you, you should be coming in and calling a man, wiping him out, and leaving the ball clear for your teammate. Washington College now sets up their clear. A lot of times when you have small players like this, Bob, you don't get a lot of volunteers for guys saying, I got the man. <laughs> yeah, everybody's, I got the ball, you take the man. Here comes Washington College. Rick Soule seems to have been in the game the entire, entire game so far. There's and Tommy there's Gaines. that clearing pass that they've needed to get. And that was the attack, the Bob, coming across the midfield stripe. You're so right. And uh, as all good coaches do, Terry Corcoran saw the hole in the ride. Took advantage of it. You can hear the wind whistling through our microphones here. Soul has the ball checked away. He's double team, triple team. Ducar knocked down or tripped. Here comes Hobart if they can pick it up. Kept in play nicely. Cal Harris with control. Harris rolling in, has his man beat. There here comes the slide. Harris still gets the shot off, knocked down by Baker. And Cal Harris, Harris, Harris wiped that one of the Washington College showmen. That's a move I haven't seen. That was an off, I think it was off tackle, wasn't it? Like a straight up <laughs> off tackle play. He came around the guard and he came right into the goalie. And there's the call by the referees calling and lifted his arm. Now watch when he comes in, you go, if he butts in head first, that's okay. But watch his off stick arm shove the man up. He shoves the man off with his off stick arm. That is not legal, and that's why the ball is going back to Washington College. John Nostrit, 5'8", 165. Cal Harris, 5'10", 170. Not too much of a mismatch there. Pretty equal. Now back to Baker. Both teams' games have broken down a little bit. There's only five minutes left in the half. Washington College needs to get a good shot off. Settle down, take a good shot. 
There's the attack helping out. They've got a man open on the far side. Good pass. Another backside feed. And that time, the wide pass is what took away that shot. They shoot and they score. Number 15. John That's Nelson. John Nostrum. Real nice has, play. Uh, second I tell you, for Washington College. A lot of composure for Washington College in that play. These guys aren't real flashy. They're not big. They're not real fast. But they're real well schooled and good stick work. The ball came all the way across the nostrum, and then he just winds up and takes a shot. By that time, the goalie, Chucky Warren, was over on the right side. He had to go back over the left side. See him moving? He's moving his feet. Now he thinks he's set, but he's not. The hard shot came over his shoulder. Real nice shot by John Nostrum. Four to two, and I tell you what, Washington College is probably just about where they want to be after that slow start. Yeah, they've played very, very well since the uh, end of the first quarter. And they have really dominated play, actually, this whole second quarter. Here they come again. They've got a fast break. Over to Gaines. Gaines feeds inside. And a great save by Warren. Turns that back. Shot by Dan Ducar. Should have been a goal. Now Gaines is moving. He comes clear. He's got a good left hand. Low bouncer once again. Picked off by Warren. And a quick outlet pass to Billy Bergen. They feed inside. Fast break coming up. Beautiful shot. We'll see who it is as soon as he turns his number our way. Cal Harris, I believe. I think you're right, Lee. It is Cal Harris. But i tell you who set that up. The whole team did on a fast break. It came over to Grimaldi first. Now watch the play. Moving around. This is where you run a fast break. You hit the open man. Come down to the point. Grimaldi has it. He draws the defenseman over. And then there he is, Cal Harris on the far side, dipping it right over top of Greg Baker. Greg Baker had little or no chance to stop that if they made that second pass complete. And they did. There's the uh, excitement from uh, Cal Harris, number 15. He's a senior. 17 goals on the year, 31 points. Real balanced attack. And timeout called by Tom, I mean by Terry Corcoran. Corcoran uh, sees his team play very well for about 11 minutes, and all of a sudden one fast break the other way, and they're down three. It's Hobart five, Washington College two. A little under five minutes remaining here in the first half, 457 to be exact. They play beautifully on that end. As a matter of fact, they had some real good shots. They didn't get the ball in there, and of course, on the broken situation, if a team like Hobart can move it that well, you're going to get burned once in a while. I want to remind our fans that Home Team Sports is professional boxing. Live from the Sands Hotel in Atlantic City, it's the 10-round light heavyweight bout between former WBA champion Mike Rossman and Roddy McDonald. Monday night at 9 p.m., live and exclusive, you'll see the best in professional boxing right here on Home Team Sports, the channel you cheer for. One of our producer Joe Harlan's favorite sports. I'm sure he'll want to watch that. Looking this capacity crowd, standing room only. Here we are into the huddle. This is the Hobart Statesman huddle. And I'll tell you what, this is going to be their fifth championship if they can pull this off, Bob. That should probably be unprecedented. I don't know the facts on that, but it, it, it's got to be one of the best records ever. Dave Urich. They've Hobart had, has won 40 straight games against Division III competition. They've been in a championship, I think they've had a championship seven of the last ten years. And since the change in Division Three standings, where they wiped out Division Two, went to solely Division Three playoff, they've been the only team that won the championship four years straight. Tom Rosa facing off for Hobart, and Kevin Giblin for Washington College. Good tight shot there as Hobart gains control. And they lose it as quickly as they gain it. Here comes Grimaldi. <laughs> Dave Burek uh, really upset he didn't get a call on that. He wanted to slash. He heard the contact. He may have heard the contact. It was close up around the head, but if it's a brush or if it hits the stick and goes into the helmet, that is a lot of times okay and it's not a penalty. Four minutes and 34 seconds remaining here in the first half. Hobart five, Washington College two. Voting now as Hobart sets up a good screen in front of the cage. They give it off quickly to Tommy Rosa. Rosa feeds over to Scott Zadel, and they feed once again backside. Good ball movement until that last pass, and Washington College will gain control. Look out! <laughs> That's the one they throw. The guy's looking at you, right? And he, and he says, as he turns, you're throwing a pass. The old lookout pass. Controlled now by Mark Van Arsdale. Washington College would hate to allow a goal right here. Five to two, I think they're in pretty good shape. Six to two is a pretty good margin, four goals. Well, as you get down to the end of the first half, uh, you need that momentum going for you when you go to the locker room. And right now, Hobart has gained it back. Over to Cal Harris. Harris feeds the cutter. It's Van Arsdale as he comes off the crease. And he has his first goal today. Mark Van Arsdale on a nice cut. 
A good feed by Cal Harris puts Hobart on top, six to two. We saw Mark Van Arsdale in the open. The guy's got 31 goals and 28 assists on the year. He leads the team in goals, assists, and points. Here it is. Watch Harris. He'll drive the pipe, pull the defense up a little bit, and then here comes Van Arsdale cutting down real nicely off the crease. And that's just a Hobart is setting up in a two-man crease, and then they're picking for one another on the crease. The man coming clear gets the feed. He doesn't come clear. They take it back around and reload again. What happens when that feed comes out to the crease, the goalie yells, check, and you've got to check down that stick and, and keep him from getting that good quick stick off. Facing off for Hobart. Number 40, Glenn Vivian. Hobart's Hobart starting to uh, dominate the faceoffs a little bit, too. That becomes a factor once you get behind in the game, uh, although we've seen teams uh, lose... 75% of the faceoffs and still win. But when you get behind, you have to have possession. So the faceoff becomes uh, increasingly important. Driving back in. Nice move inside by number 29, Roy Gilliam. He still has possession. He's going to draw a slashing call. I think it would be a slashing number 37. He came in there pretty hard, heavy with a stick. That's Cranston. Greg Gilliam drawing a double team, and you'll see it again. I think it was just uh, it was too much hitting. Now watch how he hits one, two, he'll hit him three or four times. There's two, and here's three. That's when the flag goes up. See that? The referee was right there. Great camera angle. That's flashing. The, norm, the normal rule of thumb is you can hit him twice, then back off and give him a little breathing room. If you hit him three times hard, not getting close to the stick, usually the referee's going to pull the, the flag. Stick was in the other hand, in fact. Yeah, but I mean, you can hit that offhand stick as long as it's protecting his, 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 the, stick that, the hand that has a stick. But that seemed to be a little bit excessive. Three hits in a row. Hobart, uh, two for three on extra man so far. Their fourth extra man opportunity right now. One minute penalty. Billy Bergen looks over, doesn't give it in. Now puts it, he'll put it back over as he rolls back out across the top. They're set up in a 1-4-1. Hobart in a 1-4-1. They try to get the shot out to the wing to O'Hara. O'Hara feeds inside. And that one got knocked down. Picked off by a Washington College defenseman. Rolling up the field, number 23, that's Eric Gerigswald. He gives it off to Walker Taylor. It's always a tough feed to go into the crease when you're on extra man because that's where your defense is sitting in much, pretty much of a zone. They want to take away the crease shot and give it the outside shot. Ducar rolling in, looking for the double team. Gets it, but can't find an open man. He gives it off back out front. We're down to two minutes remaining in the first half. It's Hobart 6, Washington College 2. Ricky Soule takes it back behind. He's looking for a little help. Going to draw the double team and try to dish it off. Puts it out front. And a good shot taken in there by Dan Ducar. That's the play he wanted. Drew the double team, had the open man out front. Soul set it up. He took the double team, you're right, and then dished it off front. But I think Ducar is hurting a little bit as far as his play. He's a freshman. He's not real seasoned. And he's not real fast, Bob. There's a young man backing up the goal. And you can see what school he's rooting for. A few years from now, that boy will probably be an All-American here. Or a television producer. <laughs> Same thing, isn't it? <laughs> And now, Walker Taylor coming to the side of the cage. He picked up inside. He gives it off. Back to Soul. Soul doing yeoman duty here for Washington College. Top shot is high. Knocked down by Warren. And uh, two men fighting for it. Still no possession. Soul regains. Does a roll dodge. Comes back in. Goes to shoot again. And has it knocked down again. And that'll be uh, a good play by Soul. for the push call there, but... Yeah, so Soul hustling. Had, that's right. The referee judged that it was not be, from behind. It was from the side of the player. But Soul, he came in and he made a lot of nice moves. But he made, there's the, there's the, uh, now watch Soul number 30. He comes over, checks the man from the side. That's legal. The ball goes out of bounds. They maintain possession. He's tired right now. Let's see if they get a sub in for him. Watch him now. Watch him make a play. He can play the man as long as he's within five yards of the ball. The ball, just before it hit his stick, he's legal target. And Soul takes him out and gets the ball back for his team. Back to Walker Taylor. Taylor quickly over to Tommy Gaines. A minute and ten left, Bob. Giblin uh, tries to get it to Soul. It's taken away. Fast break coming up for Hobart. Shot to save. Baker in a lot of trouble now. He's going to need some help. He finds it back behind the cage. Back over quickly to Kevin Giblin. Baker makes it look pretty easy, but that's a real exceptional save when you come in three on one like that. We're inside a minute. We've got about 43 seconds remaining here in the first half as Washington College throws it away. Kevin Giblin leading his pass too far to Dan Ducar. And Hobart will have 35 seconds to try to put one more score on the board. 
They already lead by four. Here's the crowd. They like what they see. Six to two so far. And Washington College has had their opportunities, Bob. Looks like their experience is just kind of hurting them a little bit in key situations. And that's the man right there, Ducar, the freshman. You saw come up the field. That I think they might do well to get somebody else in there that can handle the speed a little more. Quick feed to Carey. Carey tries to get it back over. To a man in the middle. And then now Hobart's going to call timeout. They want to set up this one last play with 25 seconds remaining here in the first half. What would you call here, Leaf? Hobart ball. I'd come around and give it to my big man like they did before. Work it around behind. They, they do so well. The, uh, the work off the crease. They get the guy coming from behind, Tom Grimaldi, a lot of times. He's beautiful at forcing to the plane of the goal, drawing the double team, and then dishing it off for a feed. We'll see if that's what they set up. And, of course, Washington College will probably put uh, six long sticks in the game. Both teams use a similar philosophy for the six long sticks. They bring in a fresh unit, six long sticks. Two of them go back on the close defense, and they swing two of the close defensemen up into the midfield because they have better legs. Not better looking legs, but I'm the best legs. Yes, I saw some of those legs. They're not good looking legs. <laughs> home team sports is home team baseball. Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock, live and exclusive from Oakland's Alameda Stadium, the Orioles meet the Oakland A's in day two of their three game series. That's Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m. You'll see the best in home team baseball right here on Home Team Sports, the channel you cheer for. The Baltimore Orioles. Putting now for the whistle to blow. 25 seconds remaining on the clock. Here in the first half. Here's Grimaldi. College. Let's see if he takes it back. He might give it to Van Arsdale, which he does. Van Arsdale coming front. Put it out to O'Hara. O'Hara cranks and scores. Second goal for Pat O'Hara. They did pretty much what we thought they might, except the personnel are a little bit different. Watch the pass. Oh, you, we, watched, we watched the pass, watch this. Back to Grimaldi, there's the shot up top. Before that, by Pat O'Hara, it's the second goal of the game. He's a senior. But what happened was they drove from behind. Mark Van Arsdale, who's very dangerous, drove from behind. The double team started. The slide came into him, leaving Pat O'Hara open up top. Right away when he sees the double team, he throws the ball up top to Pat O'Hara. He comes in and cranks it up from the outside. 14 seconds remaining here in the first half. It's Hobart 7, Washington College 2. Last four minutes, Washington's game has really come apart. Ball control by Washington College. Russ look. He's inside. And a good defensive slide in there by Hobart. Will be the last play of the first half. And you can hear this crowd roaring. And it's no doubt who's leading this game. It's Hobart 7, Washington College 2. Stay tuned. We have a very special halftime for you. I'm sure you won't want to miss it. Team Sports is home team lacrosse. Sunday, beginning at 2 o'clock, it's a collegiate doubleheader. Catch all the action of the NCAA Division I semifinals. The excitement of a collegiate lacrosse doubleheader begins at 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon. You'll see the best in home team lacrosse right here on Home Team Sports, the channel you cheer for. East Point, Maine, and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. East Point means a New England clam bake, summer fun, and food at its best. And Old Milwaukee means a great... Crisp Old Milwaukee beer and smooth, golden Old Milwaukee light. It's old Milwaukee. And old Milwaukee light. We've just completed 30 minutes of the Division III NCAA Lacrosse Championship, and Hobart leads Washington College 7-2. Quickly run down the scoring for Washington College. Tommy Gaines, one goal. John Nostrand, one goal. For Hobart, Tom Grimaldi, one goal. Cal Harris, two goals. Mark Van Arsdale, one goal. Pat O'Hara, two goals. And Billy Bergen, one goal. What do you think so far, Leaf? I think uh, the experience the, Washington or the Hobart team has is really showing. Washington College has had their opportunities, and if it wasn't for a little bit of bad luck, and a lot of uh, inexperience, they'd be right in the game. But Hobart, you can't, you know, any good team, you can't give them that seam or they'll jump right in it. And that's what Hobart does. They ran the ball down your throat if you make an error. 
some of the ball boys here backing up the goal so the ball can be put back in play quickly. And you see the size of their sticks. We talked about uh, the length of sticks a little earlier in the game. And I know you had an opportunity to have a demonstration for us. Let's take a look at that right now. Thank you very much, Bob. We've got a very special guest at halftime today, the Washington College coach, Terry Corcoran. Terry, we've watched your team battle Hobart today in the championship, but what the fans don't know at home is how close to home this field is to you. Why don't you start with where you grew up and where you played ball? Well, I grew up in Corning, New York. It's about 45 minutes south of Geneva. I was actually born in Geneva, so my father's family is uh, from. And uh, this is where I spent my college career. You know, I played in three championship games here at uh, Hobart. and uh, Three-time All-American? Yes, yes, it was. And I was very fortunate at the time to play with a great deal of uh, talent and uh, some good coaches you know Jerry Schmidt Dave York was assistant coach at that time uh, under Jerry Schmidt who's head and Dave's head coach here right now you were an assistant coach here sit down and relax a little bit you were assistant coach in 1982 that was just two years ago when Washington College came down to play Hobart in the same championship game for division three right uh, well, I was here in, uh, in the semifinals uh, when they Washington won the semifinals and uh, a year later I left to Princeton and then Washington came back and played in the finals that year and this year you've got Washington College coming in for a chance to beat Hobart, of course, the team you played for so well as an All-American. Mm -hmm. How has the Hobart training reflected in your coaching styles at Washington College? Well, I think there's a lot of similarities between the two teams. Uh, you know, we're a very aggressive, very physical team. Uh, much of our strength is uh, around our defense, our goalie, Greg Baker, and a lot of our offense starts from our defense. You know, we're aggressive, very aggressive, very physical, and uh, it creates a lot of transition, a lot of fast break goals for our offense. You know, living in New York all your life and playing ball up here, it's kind of exciting to us or we're down in the home team sports area, which is Maryland, Washington, Virginia. Mm. You live in Washington now, or you live, I'm sorry, in Chestertown, down at Washington College. Yes. You like it? I like it a great deal. Uh, the Eastern Shore is very much like upstate New York, where I'm from, uh, except the weather is a great deal better. <laughs> the weather's better, for sure. Yeah. Now, Hobart College has won four straight championships. You think this is going to go? This is, you know, a tremendous record. Uh, do you feel that you can penetrate that record, maybe get Washington College up there on par with Hobart? Well, we're a very hungry team. Uh, you know, Hobart has a great deal of pride, great deal of tradition, as does Washington College. And uh, we've got one thing going for us today. We've got a hunger that uh, only someone that's never won knows. We're getting ready for the second half in a little while. Do you think you're a second half team? Yes, yes. We're, uh, we're going to be going the whole 60 minutes to the game today. You've got uh, two years under your belt at Washington College now. Do you feel that without the ability to have scholarship money, that's going to hinder you against the bigger programs in uh, lacrosse? Oh, no, not at all. I think one, uh, one thing a lot of people don't realize about Division One and Division Three is that uh, scholarships are for a year. And, uh, you know, a lot of kids get money to go away to college. They only get it for a year. At Division Three level, we can't uh, award money based on uh, athletic ability. However, we're able to... Uh, provide financial aid packages for the students who qualify that have need and uh, they've got that for four years uh, that's something they've got no matter uh, you know how well they play lacrosse or whether they decide to drop and uh, that's something we can offer uh, you know a student athlete that uh, division one schools can and we're looking for a student athlete you know we're not looking for somebody to come play two or three years of lacrosse we're looking for a student to come and graduate and uh, again it's my second year at Washington College and uh, I've been in touch with a lot of alumni, and just seeing where the kids go that graduate from our program, they're very, very successful. And uh, a big part of that is the alumni in the Baltimore, Maryland area. You know, they're very helpful and, uh, you know, send up interviews for our graduates. And I think we've got just as much to offer uh, as any Division One school, you know, financially or career-wise, you know, what, and which is the most important thing in the end. And, I tell you uh, what, you have a beautiful setting. Just yeah. Getting back to Chestertown, yeah. it's, it's a fantastic yeah. place to live yeah. or go to school. Certainly. And the lacrosse end of it is, uh, you know, we're in a Division Three tournament. However, we're playing mostly Division One schedule. You know, we're playing Johns Hopkins, UMBC, and Navy, and uh, top teams like that in the country. Terry, thank you very much for joining us at halftime. Good luck in the second half. Let's go back to Bob Smith. Thank you very much, Leif. And you see a very, very little tiny fan, and she's got a little wooden stick there, the kind you buy at the Lacrosse Foundation. And, of course, uh, that's what they grew up to be. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, we'll be back in just a moment with more at halftime, including the stick demonstration by Lee Felsmo. Home Team Sports is professional boxing. Monday night at 9 o'clock, live and exclusive, former WBA champ Mike Rossman headlines the card at Atlantic City Sands Hotel. 
Monday Night at the Fights, live at 9 o'clock. You'll see the best in professional boxing right here on Home Team Sports, the channel you cheer for. This bartender's next big league pitcher and loves to serve fire-brewed strobes. See what I mean? That was his fastball. That was the curve. <laughs> Look out. Wild pitch. What was that? Relief pitcher. From one beer lover to another strobes. <laughs> Welcome back to Hobart Stadium here in Geneva, New York. Bob Smith along with Lee Belsmo. And you see the score at halftime. Hobart 7, Washington College 2. Now let's take a look at that stick demonstration taped earlier by Lee. Let's take a few minutes at halftime to hopefully answer some of your questions about lacrosse equipment. Today we're going to talk about the lacrosse stick and answer some questions about the length of the stick. You see different lengths up and down the field. Why is that? Let's start and let's do the discussion around the crease area because this is where in the theory becomes into practice and all the theories about the length of the stick really come true. The small stick is used by the attackman. He needs his stick to be small so they can hide it from the defenseman, protect it with his body and get off short, quick passes and shots. That's why he a lot of times uses the minimum length required by the rule book and that is 40 inches long. It must be a minimum of 40 inches long. If you're playing defense against an attackman, you need some different things out of your stick, and one obvious thing is you need extra length. The rule books give you a maximum length of 72 inches. Being a defender, you want to keep the attackman off of your body. Anytime during the game that you see an attackman up face-to-face -face with the defenseman, that defenseman's in trouble because the attackman with his agility will get around him, and with a cumbersome stick, a defensive play can't be made. The long pole, up to 72 inches, is used to keep the attackman off him. Keep about a three-foot area in between them. Constantly checking at the player to dislodge the ball if he can. That's the defense stick, maximum length, 72 inches. The stick that's really unique in the game is the goalie stick. It doesn't fall under the general rules that these two sticks have. The goalie stick is the one stick that can be a maximum of 12 inches wide. And there's no requirement for the length of the goalie stick. If the goalie wants to have it six feet long, which you won't see, he can have it that long. This is the typical length of the goalie stick. It's approximately 50 inches long. The crease area, we're going to mention very quickly, is 18 feet across, and this is the area that this goalie is going to be protected in. The defenseman can run through the crease if they don't have the ball, and if they do have the ball, just like an attackman, they are not allowed to come through the crease area. Anyway, hopefully the length of the sticks, that has answered some of your questions. Back to the second half. A uh, beautiful day. Some of the beautiful white fluffy clouds you see there over Geneva, New York. Let's take a look at the stats at halftime. Of course, we know the, <clears throat> the score is 7-2. to two. Shots are pretty even, 21-19. to 19. Saves, of course, correspond uh, a little bit heavier on Hobart because they're winning with the 7-2 score. Face-offs dead even. That's a surprise because Hobart, in the late going in the first half, started to dominate that area. Shooting percentage, and that may be the difference right there. 37%, nearly 40% for Hobart. Washington College, with that bad luck in the first half, especially the first quarter, couldn't dent the net. Kept hitting the pipe, hitting a defenseman, hitting a goalie. They're shooting only 10%. And, of course, one for four, 25% effectiveness for the extra man situation for Hobart. Zero for three so far. If you add that to the first game, that's zero for 10. Washington College against Hobart, they've got to score on extra man to win this game. We just learned from the NCAA that should Hobart go on to win this game, Dave York will be only the third coach of any team sport in NCAA history to win five straight champions championships. John Wooden of UCLA and Rod Godot of USC, the other two men. Wooden, of course, basketball coach at UCLA and Rod Godot, the baseball coach at USC. Billy Bergen controls and Hobart goes on offense to start the third quarter. Here comes Bergen. Bergen driving in. He can shoot from there, and the ball trickles out to the left side as it gets off Greg Baker's stick. Grimaldi knocked down and uh, has the ball chopped away. Now Baker's out of the cage as he goes to double team, but he gets back in quite, quite enough in time. Baker knocks down the pass. Quick alley pass, number 15, John Nostrin. Ooh, I saw that coming. The bevel really was clocked. He gets up all right, though. Steve Bevel got knocked down, and he's blindsided. 
And that'll be a could be a loose ball push. They don't call it. Ball rolling over to Eric Gehringswald. Gehringswald is pushed from the rear. That will be called. It'll be a loose ball push, and Washington College will gain possession. Now watch this clock cleaning right here. This is totally legal. Right there, when the ball comes down, you can hit a man in the body to dislodge the ball. If he has the ball in possession or if he's within five yards of the ball, nice clean hit. The reason it was so intense was because he was looking behind him and to the side, didn't see the defenseman coming up to smack him down. Washington College sets up their clear. Hobart now back in the triangle ride. Just three men across to the top of the box. So far, this half started off like the first half ended, Bob. Everything a little scattered around. Uh, both teams not handling the ball that well. Here comes Baker. I have to feel that the wind is a little bit of a factor. Particularly anything, in, if any passes over 15 yards, the wind is going to pick the ball up. And as we see Baker trying to get over to Bevel. And once again, an errant pass. Ball trickling back towards the Hobart goal, but snared there nicely by Danny Whalen. I think another factor is that both these teams are pretty much finesse teams. You don't see a lot of size. Consequently, you're not going to see a lot of hitting. Yeah, they, hit, they hit when they have to, but uh, they don't hit them because they want to. Van Arsdale into Tommy Rosa and then over to Mark Moore. Now they put it back, back behind and Grimaldi was looking off the ball momentarily. He recovers, however. Gets checked once, twice. Steve Beville, a good check. Now Baker with the save and up with the pass. Tommy Gaines puts it down back behind. Now back to Walker Taylor. Taylor coming back out front. Has a good feed, but everybody back in the hole deeply for Hobart. As the wind kicks up, this is Washington's chance to go ahead and get back in the game. They need some real good shots to get on this Chuck, Chuck Warren, number two. Tough first half. Man comes clean, turns and shoots. Knocked down before it ever gets to the cage. Coming in and shooting Rick Coate. Here comes Hobart. Long, sharp, clearing pass up to Tommy Rosa. Rosa rolling in. They've got a fast break set up. And Rosa couldn't make up his mind what he wanted to do with the ball. At the last minute, tried to flip it over to Tom Grimaldi. It goes out of bounds, and Washington College will get possession. And you're right, Leaf. It's sort of a I don't want a new take it type thing so far. With three minutes gone in the third quarter. So you caught that right, too. He came in. He had a good shot. He was winding up for the shot. And just before he released it to go for the goal, you saw the attackman coming around his teammate, coming around to his right. So he tried to dish it off to him for an easier shot. And he made it up. He made the, you know, the eventual pass was not a pass or a good feed. Greg Baker brings it up very slowly. Once again, Hobart in the triangle ride. Give it off to John Kelly. Now over to Beville. And a push out of bounds, and the ball flipped out at the last moment. We'll see what the call is, whether it's a push or out of bounds. It will be out of bounds, and Hobart will go back on offense. Nice play by Mike Martin. He's a senior, the senior captain for Hobart. He rolled the clearing man right to the sideline again. Most of this Washington College team, not that big. They don't look for any hits. There's Coach Dave Yurick. Real good play on that ride. He knows he can dominate this team riding-wise. And uh, Martin came over and just pushed him out of bounds. Pushed him right out of bounds and got the ball back for his team. Shows uh, the difference in team speed between Hobart and Washington College. It's apparent here, as we have 11 minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the third quarter, that uh, Hobart has a lot better team speed than Washington College. A little bit better size, too. This isn't a big team for Hobart, but they're a little bit bigger than Washington. Long clearing pass over here to Scott Zadel. And Zadel gets it up to Tom Rosa. Rosa looks for an opening on the far side, gets it downfield quickly to Cal Harris. And now we've got the matchup of Cal Harris for Hobart and number 42, Brian Irwin for Washington College. They feed it back out top. Scott Zadel can't handle, however. And the quiet, the crowd is quieted down here quite a bit as they're waiting for a little bit of action, a little bit waiting for a spark. Hobart now cutting down into a 1-4-1, and they back out of that into a 2-3-1. Grimaldi with a big move behind, rolls back in, tries to find a double team. Quick feed inside, and a beautiful score by Mark Moore. As Grimaldi got what he wanted, he drew the double team. Tipped it off to Mark Moore, and Mark Moore has the eighth goal for Hobart. They lead 8-2 with 10.58 remaining here in the third quarter. Let's take a look at it again. This is what the Hobart team has been doing beautifully. You see Tom Grimaldi, the All-American, come in. He watched him draw the double team. The defense for Washington has to respect him coming in like that, so they freeze a little bit, and they leave their own man alone. And when they did that, Mark Moore became open. Grimaldi hit him with a little bit of a pass, bounce shot in. There you go. Eighth goal for Hobart. There's another shot of it from the back. 
Again, Grimaldi drawing the slide, dishing off to Mark Moore, who's running on the third unit for Hobart. Actually, a partial double team by Greg Baker, the goalie, which left him completely out of position when the quick feed came into the crease. Washington likes to double team, and that's what's getting him in trouble against a team like Hobart, who can really move the ball through the air. Marty Wood, number 27 on the handle. Now Hobart driving in, another shot knocked down, picked off by Baker. Baker looks for a little bit of help. He's got it on the far side, near side of the field to Eric Gehring's wall, and Eric's going to try to leg it across. He's forced back. And you can see Eric Gehring's wall is 5'10", 175. Even the defensemen on Washington College aren't too big. They've got it cleared now. They'll put it back point behind to Walker Taylor. Taylor turns around, looks back out front. Trying to find a little bit of help. It's being picked up there by Devin Ar Arkison. Now, number 19, Danny Ducar coming in. Ducar has the ball checked away, and a nice over-the-head check by Martin. But pops right up in the stick of Walker Taylor. Taylor looking back out front once again. Try to feed it out this side. John Nostrand rolls in. He can fire from there and knock down as uh, Warren jumped up in the air. The ball bounced up, hit him in the feet, and it's still in play. Picked up by Washington College. They're rolling in, 2-1-1 on in the nearest far side of the field. They put it back out front. A high shot by Nostrand. And the rebound almost goes in. And Warren gets in and gets out again. That time he got away with the in and out. Both feet went out of the crease area, but he came back in quickly. Nice play by both teams, actually, on the crease area. Heads up all the way. Hobart comes out with it. Marty Wood with a long pass across the middle. Good hit inside. Takes away the uh, shot. Still no possession. Gehring's wall running it down the far side. He's going to have it cleared across the midfield line. Rolling in. Looks back. Can't find any help. Washington College attacking. Breaking back to the end line. And they get open. Dan Ducar receives the pass. There's Ducar again, slow, he's a slow of feet, he doesn't have real quickness. Bounces one high over the cage. Makes himself a good target for the defenseman. I think he's got to move the ball in the air a little better. Ball checked away by Dan Whalen. He picks it up, looks up front, trying to find some help. He'll go far side, first goes for the goalie. And they'll come up field quickly with Marty Wood. There's a long clearing pass, that's going to be out of the stadium, I think. And kept in play nicely on a big hustle by Mark Van Arsdale. Van Arsdale has it. The goalie's out of the cage. Van Arsdale looks in front. Can't find anybody open. Now feeds the side. They try to pump it by with Grimaldi. He doesn't get it in there. And that time, uh, Washington College dodges the bullet. Uh, Baker was real lucky. He came out and played the back line. The ball looked like it was going to roll out, but the real high grass kept it in. Baker went back and made a half-hearted attempt to get it, caught himself out of the cage, and Hobart almost got an easy goal. Washington College has the ball cleared. Up to John Nostrum. Nostrum looking for help. Rolls in. He's about to be double-teamed. Gives it off behind. Over to Walker Taylor. Taylor coming back front. Back front. Contradiction terms coming out front. Taylor, even though he's small, moves well. Now watch how this defenseman works over Ducar because he doesn't move that fast. He's too slow moving the ball, so he's a target all the time. Ducar pushes off a little bit, gets away with it, feeds backside. Nostrand fires high over top of the cage. Nostrand's not afraid to shoot. Oh, he's got a good shot, too. A good left-handed shot. He has one goal in this game. And everyone getting a little bit of wind burn, a little bit of sunburn today. I like, I like to see him take Dan Ducar, put him on the crease, have him pop out, and let Tommy Gaines work the backside. Here it is again. You see the shot go right next to the goal. 7.48 remaining here in the third quarter of the Division Three Lacrosse Championships. Hobart leads Washington College 8-2. Man up in the middle, Billy Bergen. Bergen's going to dodge across the middle of the line. He's going to draw a double team and give it off back to the center again. Over to Pat O'Hara. O'Hara getting a lot of heat there from Steve Beville. Finds an opening in the middle. The open man is always usually behind you, Leaf, isn't he? He is because that <laughs> defense, the, you, know, you don't want him to be, you want him to be up front, but you've got to turn around across the grain, against the grain, and get it behind your, or against the, the pressure that you're feeling up front. Quick move inside by John Holohan. Holohan tries to feed the crease, knocked down. You can hear Hobart starting their chant again, the fans here. We're trying to tell what they're saying. I'm not sure. Do you want to just leave? I can't make it out, no. There's... Rolling back in, and once again, knocked down by Baker as the game is sort of degenerated into a one-on-one -on -one show at this point. Washington does play. They have, Washington has, from the very beginning of the game, played aggressive defense. They're double-teaming. Of course, it got them in trouble early on, but now they're taking charge defensively. They just need to shoot some more. Ball checked away from Tommy Gaines. Today's official attendance, 3,763, and that's a full house here at Hobart College. Good move by the Hobart defenseman. Gets it off to Billy Bergen. 
And then Bergen will hold the play up as he gives it off to Pat O'Hara, and they'll wait to get a long stick out and a short stick in. You know, Bob, this, the game, this Hobart hand. team, excuse me, this right. Hobart team, uh, div being Division Three, as we go behind the goal, we'll take a look at the offense. They play a great schedule. They play a Division One schedule. They play Syracuse, who's the best team in the country. They play them twice this year. Gave them a good game both times, I believe. They did. Less than five, six, six goal one game difference and a five goal the next. It's a foot race now. And a nice play as they rose it off to Walker Taylor. As a matter of fact, last year, this team played North Carolina, who we saw earlier on home team sports last Wednesday, played Virginia, beat them soundly. Well, this Hobart team beat them last year. Eric Gehring's wall clearing the ball went to the field that time and found help with Walker Taylor. Now back to Tommy Gaines. Gaines yes. coming front, looking for help. No movement on the crease for Washington College. Lee. They're standing still, and you're not going to get anybody open that way. Now, if I was coaching, I, as I said, I like Dukar being, Dukar being out in front of the crease, which he was, but then he didn't move to get the feed. Dukar puts a point behind. Back to Gaines. Gaines tries to feed a cutter. The ball gets through. We will be backed up over there by number 24, Pat Onady. Still no control. The ball rolls out of bounds. We'll wait the ball. ball. go back to Washington College, but it was great hustle by the Hobart team. Number 23, Jim Houlihan. He's the first team All-American, and that's one of the reasons why. He plays well off the ball like all great team players do. He came running up, out-hustled the Washington player, pushed the ball out of bounds, unfortunately, so it'll go back to Washington. Putting now as the team substitute. New midfield units coming in for Washington College. Number 15, John Noster. Number 30, Rick Soule. And number 46, Kevin Gilbin. And we're still holding it up. And now back to action. We've seen a couple postseason tournament record holders on this field today. Greg Baker, the Washington College goalie, All-American goalie, holds the record for saves in a tournament game, 30. And he made that record two years ago in this very game against Hobart, championship game against Hobart. Two good moves by Rick Soule. Gets the ball across the midfield line. Inadvertent whistle. One of the officials thought perhaps Washington College was offside. <laughs> But they indeed had uh, four men back in front. <laughs> in case. They gave a penalty. Too many men back. Too safe. Waiting now for everyone to get on side. And Rick Soule put the ball in play 15 yards, uh, maybe 10 yards outside the box. Gives it off to John Nostrum. Now back to Walker Taylor. Taylor wants to come front. Has the ball checked away. On a very nice check by number 35. For Hobart. And we do not have a number 35 listed on our roster, so we'll have to look and see what it was. 35 later. is Kevin Zinch. Zinch. The sophomore, he's six feet tall and 200 pounds. Fast break set up and they throw it away. But just to talk about the mismatch, Bob, the Kevin Zinch, who just played Walker Taylor and stripped him of the ball, he's six feet, 200 pounds. He weighs a clear 50 pounds more than Walker Taylor and stands about uh, six inches taller than he does, seven inches taller. It's been a size mismatch in uh, many situations here today. Hobart being a much bigger team at both ends of the field than Washington College. And it shows up in many situations. Steve Bevel puts it back to Greg Baker. You look at Coach Terry Corker. I bet you he was a hoss to handle. He's got great size. <laughs> Coming around the cage, he sure Whoa. was. Baker's uh, got a four across clear now. Puts it over on the far side of the field to Rick Coate. Rick Soule. And good, quick, clear. No opening. Two men back in the hole. And that shot handled by Chuck Warren. Hobart got back in the hole very, very quickly. Nice shot, though, by Russ Locke. Here comes Soule. Soule can shoot with either hand. Draws a double team. Can't find anybody to dish off to. He'll have to take it back out of the box. He's eating a lot of plastic out there at this point. 3.39 remaining in the third quarter. It's Hobart 8, Washington College 2. Nice shot taken there by Dukar. He took a one-handed shot as he was knocked down. That wide of the goal backed up by Washington College, however, and they'll get the ball back. Well, with three minutes, three and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter, the score is eight to two. Not much has happened in the third quarter. Washington College needs to get a few more shots off. It'd be nice if they could close the gap. Two more goals here, and they're going to be in it. Eight to, they'll be eight to four, plenty of time. Trey D'Ambrogi in on uh, midfield now for Washington College, number 21. They'll go down and set up a post about seven yards outside the goal. Still waiting now for a substitution. We're not quite sure what we're waiting on here. And when the whistle blows to start play, that matchup again, you're going to see Kevin Zitch, a six foot, 200 pounder, against that gutty little Walker Taylor. 5'5, 150. Put it back behind to Tommy Gaines. Gaines coming front, has his man beat by a step, looks out for a feed, can't find anybody to give it off to. He'll put it back behind. Now decides against that, comes back in, 
And Hobart just playing excellent team defense here. Back out to John Kelly. Here comes Soul. Soul driving in. Excuse me, that's number 31. That's uh, John Kelly driving in. He shoots. Snared nicely by Chuck Warren. Here comes Hobart. Hobart rolling in. No fast break. Washington College back in the hole very nicely. Sean Fox bringing it up. We'll give it off quickly to Tommy Rosa. I was just going to say, Bob, with those break situations, if you're not familiar with lacrosse, they're actually very patterned. When the goalie makes a save, he'll yell break. The whole defense takes off on angles up the field. And he'll look for an outlet pass to get a fast break going and an easy clear. Hobart now setting up in a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Now they drop a man off the side. Ball going out of bounds. We'll go over to Washington College. But Washington College has not scored in this half. They trail 8-2. to two. There's going to be a timeout called by Terry Corcoran, the coach of Washington College. He is trying to get some offense going. He's talking to his attackman, Tommy Gaines. And really, it's been a, a pattern situation with Washington College and offense. They go to the cage, can't find an opening, go back. They do that two or three times and lose the ball. A team that's limited like Washington College, if they have, you know, again, their attack is the newest part of their team or the most revamped part of their team. You only have so many guns, so you have to go with that strength. You don't have the liberty of going ahead and, and just going, and going freelance and taking your opportunities when they happen. You have to kind of create something with what you have to do best. I think what they should do is take Tom Gaines, who's led them all the way this year, put him behind the goal, let him drive to the plane, and if he can get a shot off, fine. If he can dish it off, all the better. This will remind our sports fans on home team sports that home team sports is Orioles baseball. Tuesday night at 10.30, live and exclusive from Oakland's Alameda Stadium, the Orioles begin their three-day series with the Oakland Athletics. That's Tuesday night at 10.30, live. You'll see the best in home team baseball right here on Home Team Sports, the channel you cheer for. Waiting now for the team to come back onto the field. Good look at Terry Corcoran. Let's see what he's cooked up here on offense for Washington College. What are they cheering, Lee? We want what? I was trying to pick it out. <laughs> it, might, it might be a player, a favorite player of theirs or something. We're in a closed-in booth here despite the beautiful weather and probably just as well with the wind blowing like it is. So not everything comes through to us. As we see Baker bring it up. He gives it off to Sol. Sol is going to try to bring it across the midfield line. He does nicely. And uh, no offsides, but Sol gives it off now to Walker Taylor. Two men diving back like they were going to be offsides on material for Washington College. But Washington College stays on side. Now Walker Taylor coming out, draws a double team. They look in front. Now over to John Nostrand. Nostrand feeds a long pass point behind. Back to Gaines. Gaines coming back out. Hobart's looks doubling over. the ball. For some reason, looks like they're doubling the ball. They have plenty of time left in the quarter. A minute and 46 seconds. We're not sure what the reason is. We'll see what They've this got too many men on the field. That's why. One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> makes six, it very seven. easy to double the ball. <laughs> You've got yeah. seven guys down the other end. I thought it was some six. sort of uh, new defensive <laughs> strategy, but they put an extra man on the field as a mistake. Number one. Here we are. We're sitting up in row eight, seat six. If you had a ticket, <laughs> this is what you'd see. And a real great game being played for the Hobart fans. They're ecstatic. There's still time for Washington College. They've got they uh, get 16 back in minutes out. and 42 seconds remaining, but they've got to do something pretty quickly, and they've got to find a way to get through this Hobart defense. Well, now they're 0 for 10 the last 10 times they've tried an extra man play against the Hobart team. They've got to score here. This is when you're having man advantage, and this is when you should be able to score at least, say, 40% of the times you try. Now, Washington College said they've a wide circle with one man down in the crease. Now they cut down two men. Quick feed inside, and the feed not handled. It's kind of a bullet. It rolls in the goal, however. Off of one of the defense, we believe, and Washington College scores. They'll take a score any way they can. <laughs> the crowd doesn't like that, Bob. They want to see a route. But thank goodness for Washington College, and Terry Corkin's got his team where he wants him. Right here, Gaines comes in on the side. When the extra man plays, batted down. A little bit of a garbage goal in the crease there. They shuffled back and forth. But that, even though the, they are sort of owed a goal by the first, from the first half, but that's the kind of pressure they should put against this Hobart team. Tommy Gaines will get credit for the goal. He was the man closest to the ball. And look at that lovely young lady. lady. Bob, uh, let's, not, <laughs> let's not talk about you and the young ladies. That lady is too young now. Will you cut it out? That was a pretty little girl. All right, the goal we've been informed is given to Tom Gaines. That confirms what Bob guessed. It wasn't a guess, Leaf. That was, uh, that that was knowledge. Just, that was, yeah, that was <laughs> man closest to the cage when the ball is knocked in. We've got a minute and 23 seconds remaining here. And Washington College trails Hobart 8-3. to three, And Hobart will gain possession here. Waiting now for everyone to get set up. The dead time, you see, is usually a uh, horn blown to get long sticks in and long sticks off. 
And now Hobart clears the ball nicely. Quickly up to Scott Zadel. Zadel with a good move, tries to get clear. He's coming up against uh, Steve Beville. Nice check. Beville's played very, very well today. He's been up and down the field. He's cleared the ball by himself a couple of times. He's played very good man-for-man -man defense. Good move there by Danny Whalen. Still in possession. Now yeah, Washington College comes up with the ball. They've got one minute exactly to do something on offense. Another good hit coming up. You can see these coming from our position very, very well. Another good hit. And a possession now gained by Tom Grimaldi. Grimaldi throws it back to his defense. They'll reload the clear. I can tell you right now, Bob, that those hits are taking the smaller Washington College team out of their game. They know they're coming. They're hearing footsteps. Scott Zadel mishandles, but they get it back quickly. Back into Joe Regan. Regan gives it off to Scott Zadel. Now back to Joe Regan. 30 seconds left in the first and uh, the third quarter. It's Hobart eight, Washington College three, and Hobart on offense. Goal time is what they're cheering. Goal time, goal time. Feed back out, not handled. Kind of a weak feed by Grimaldi. Washington College has to get the ball field quickly. They've got 12 seconds. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. Down to five seconds. They throw it back in towards the cage. And Hobart will just clear the ball field kind of lazily. That is the end of the third quarter. And Hobart maintains its dominance. They lead 8-3. to three. We have one quarter to go. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. Home Team Sports is Home Team Baseball. Home Team Hockey. Team basketball and more professional collegiate and scholastic sports home team sports the channel you cheer for Shotgun Rapids, Idaho, and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. The shotgun means white water at its best. And Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp, Old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden, Old Milwaukee light. And Old Milwaukee. And Old Milwaukee light. Taste as great as their name. You know, guys, it doesn't get any better than this. Welcome back to Hobart. We've got one quarter to go. Hobart versus Washington College. As you can see, it's been Hobart all the way, 8-3. to three. They scored four goals in the first quarter and one, two, three goals in the second quarter, one goal in the third quarter, and that has uh, been enough to take a commanding lead over Washington College. Washington College now with a fast break. They feed it quickly to Gaines. Gaines gets a lot of heat, though, and has to pull back out, and effectively, that kills the fast break. Washington College traded goals in the third quarter with Hobart, but they don't need to do that. They've got to pick up some ground here. Saved by one of the defensemen on a quick move by Walker Taylor. Billy Bergen trying to pick it up. He's got it. They'll take it back in the corner. A little collision in front of the crease. Knocks down two players, but they both get up all right. That's that Walker Taylor. He's in there. He's throwing that body around. I don't know if anybody notices. Here comes Hobart. They've got a break coming in. Quick feed backside. Gets by as uh, Ramal, uh, Mark Van Arsdale can't handle. And But possession will go back over to Hobart as it was touched by one of the defenders for Washington College. There's Coach Dave Yurick, Coach of Hobart. What a tremendous record he has. Four years straight champions, nine championships in the ten, and ten of the, or I'm sorry, seven championships in the last ten years. Here comes Hobart. Van Arsdale bringing it in. Puts a point behind to Grimaldi. Grimaldi looking back out front. Tries to feed a cutter. It's Regan. And a great save inside there by Greg Baker. Washington College finally comes up with it. They're looking for some help. The attack now back in the corner. Here's Sowell. Sowell rolling in. He's got a man open in front of the cage. And they wait too long to shoot. Tommy Gaines should have shot a little earlier. He allowed the goalie to get set up and just read him all the way across. And a good save there by Chuck Warren. Well, that's absolutely right. When Tommy Gaines gets the ball or anybody gets it on top of the crease, at that very moment, you've got the goalie moving his feet, and he's trying to get reoriented to the ball. Now, when Tom Gaines holds on to the ball and comes toward the wing, the goalie has a chance to set himself and get ready for the shot. It's much easier to score in a misdirection than it is to score in a set play. Now watch, right now, the goalie has a chance to read it. There's a nice shot off stick side, and it might have gone had the goalie not gotten his fisted glove on it. 
Here comes Washington College. They reload. They're trying to get back in this game. They trail 8-3. to three. There's still time left. 13-41 remaining in the ball game. Here comes Sol. Sol looking back inside. They're trying to find a man open on the crease. Ball goes back point behind. Back down inside. Over to Nostrand. Nostrand can shoot. He's got the, one of the hardest shots on the team. Now Hobart putting a lot of pressure on. They're playing them all over the field. As Rick Coates getting a lot of heat. He's looking for help. He can go point behind. A man open back there. That's Tommy Gaines. Gaines drawing, trying to draw the double team. Wants to roll back. Changes hands. They put it back out front. Great over the head check. Washington College has to get more shots off. Rick Coates there trying to get a little vengeance for having the ball checked away. Well, Dave York is furious. He felt that was a slash, uncontrolled swing. A little too rough, he thought. He's talking to the referees right now. He wants to see that kind of stuff put away with. Now here comes Hobart. Hobart looking inside. Wants to try to get a shot off quickly. Marty Wood with the ball. He'll hold it momentarily. He had a man still trailing the play. Now back behind to Van Arsdale. Van Arsdale driving it. Pushes off with his free arm a little bit. Now back to Joe Regan. Regan feeds inside. Marty Wood. Beautiful cut. Marty Wood came off the crease. He's a senior from Lafayette. Played Lafayette high. He moved from attack to mini last year. And this shows you some of his attack moves as he cuts off the crease. This is picture perfect. This is what Hobart does all the time. Take a look. Watch the crease area. There he comes. Marty Wood slashes off the crease, leaves his defenseman behind, the guy that was playing defense on him, and just bounces it past Greg Baker. And Greg Baker didn't have much of a chance on that kind of play. There it is again. That's the aftermath of it. When you get a good cut off the crease, it's darn tough to make the save because, again, you're redirecting your attention. And if it's a good quick stick, it's usually going to find a home. Hobart uh, increases their margin. They lead 9-3, 12-26 remaining here in the ballgame. Washington College can't come up with the ball, and it goes the other way. Devin Erickson coming up with it, rolling inside. No fast break, and a late check late in there takes the ball away. Still no possession. Now controlled by Hobart momentarily. And we have a moving pick, I believe. I'm going to have to wait to see what the call is coming up. Could be a slash. Let's see. It'll be a slash. Well, people who like lacrosse, and all of our home team sports fans, we sure do like lacrosse, will want to watch tomorrow. We've got one of the best games of the year, North Carolina and Hopkins, a rematch. The game a little strange the first time, 4-3, to three, and that was due to some sensational play by both the goalies, Larry Quinn and Tim Mealy. But it will be a great game tomorrow, the semifinal of Division I. As we watched a little bit of replay of the action that we just saw, the slashing penalty, no question about it, North Carolina plays Hopkins, and that, those, that matchup is probably the best matchup over the last five years of any two teams in the game of lacrosse. Now out to, to Van Arsdale. Van Arsdale pulled out from behind the cage where he normally is, sets up on this extra man. Now he cuts back down inside. Hobart extra. He'll be extra for a full minute. Bergen rolls in, unmolested, and cranks one in for the 10th goal for Hobart. And uh, Washington College looked like they were frozen in their tracks. A well, little Bergen, I tell you, he loved it. His eyes got big as dollars because when you, what you do in that situation is the crowd goes wild, loving Bergen's second goal of the game for him. He comes right down the middle. Nobody slides out for him. What he was waiting for, he was anticipating a defenseman sliding into him, then he would dish it off. He doesn't get it. Now watch the ball come out to Bergen. He kind of goes in a little bit. Nobody picks him up. He expects to be picked up. Nobody's there. So he's confused for a second, but then he comes in and says, hey, I'm going to shoot this thing. Boom, cranks up as far as he can, goes in all the way to he's picked up, and just puts it a bullet over top of Greg Baker, who's having a heck of a time here, taking a lot of shots in the second half. No goalie deserves that. And uh, with that, Terry Corcoran calls his second time out of this half. And I'm sure he wants to uh, put a little fire in his team in the flat. That, those kind of mistakes you don't like to see any time, any game. I mean, man down situation, you've got to go out and pick up the man on the crease. Home Team Sports is Home Team Baseball. Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m., live and exclusive from Oakland's Alameda Stadium, the Orioles meet the Oakland A's in day two of their three-game series. That's Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m. You'll see the best in home team baseball right here on Home Team Sports, the channel you cheer for. Terry Corcoran has spoken to his team. We'll see if they're fired up a little more than they have been since the, actually almost the beginning of the half. They came out kind of flat beginning of the third quarter, and they have remained so except for a few brief flurries, and they now trail Hobart 10 to 3, 11 minutes and 43 seconds remaining here in the Division III championship game. 
Real good balance on the Hobart team. They've got seven different players scoring on 10 goals. Dave York, uh, we heard through our ground level Mike, was not totally satisfied with his team. In fact, despite the fact they're leading 10 to 3, he wants them to work more of a pattern offense and a little less one on one. But of course, I guess he's really got to be satisfied. You can't, you cannot be displeased when you're leading 10 to 3 in a championship game. That's right. And don't forget, this is the fifth in a row. It's some sort of, I mean, a record that anybody would be proud of. I mean, they all want the first championship. We all know it's tough to win a championship, but it's tougher to repeat is the axiom in all sports, and he's repeated four times. As we mentioned earlier, uh, if Hobart would win, Dave York would be only the third coach in NCAA history to win five straight championships in any team sport. John Wooden, the UCLA basketball coach, was one. Rod Godot, the USC baseball coach, being the other. Now, once again, uh, Washington College having trouble clearing the ball, and Hobart's coming the other way. They've got a man open down inside, Regan, but Regan is going to not get the pass as Washington College draws a good defense. Now a low bouncer taken in. As man sneaking inside for Hobart, number 40, Glenn Vivian. And once again, Hobart reloads. Washington College standing back on their heels playing defense. They've got to get a little more up on their toes. They've got to press a little more. They're trailing in this game, 10 to three. Goal time cheer, you can hear it in the background. Sounds like the cadets. Here comes Regan. Regan rolling in, turns and tries to feed backside. We'll call it a feed. We'll see what the referees do. They call it a shot, and Hobart will maintain possession. I thought that was a feed myself, didn't you, Leaf? Over to Cal Harris, backside. Looked like a feed. Of course, uh, you don't want to second-guess the referee's judgment. They can't hear us, can they? That's right. <laughs> he was dead wrong. <laughs> 10 minutes and 13 seconds remaining in the game. Take another look at it, and we'll see... Uh, I think I had a good, good excuse for being a shot. Yeah, I think it was a shot. Bob, I think you're wrong. All right. That's the only time today, I think. <laughs> Cal Harris coming back out front as the ball checked away. Another good move by Steve Beville. Picked up by Grimaldi. Grimaldi tried to feed the open man standing over there, Joe Regan. Regan's going to retrieve it. Hobart all over the ground ball here in the fourth quarter, and they are just outrunning Washington College. And a take down there. The ball checked away, and once again, Hobart comes up with it. They feed inside. Grimaldi knocked down. He's in the crease, and I'm sure that'll draw a uh, technical foul. A uh, possession goes over to Hobart as uh, they say Grimaldi was knocked into the crease. And that's a call you very seldom see. Usually if he goes in the crease, it doesn't matter who provided the impetus. It's going to be called in the crease. Well, once again, we've got a chance to see it here and make our own minds. There's the player 22 coming in and driving the Hobart man right into the crease area. Well, whatever the call... Hobart gains possession. There's Tom Grimaldi. You know, a lot of brother teams, brothers have become successful, and family followed to different colleges. It happens in all colleges. Tom Grimaldi, who you see on the screen, his brother scored the winning goal in overtime in the 82 championship versus the same Washington College. Larry and coming Larry out there stick. Uh, he's listed as number 22. We do not have a number 22 in I our roster. That's Once number again. 12, Rob Locke. I have the change here. So Rob Locke bent his pole on that push into the crease. They'll be going back up against Grimaldi. Grimaldi tried to feed inside, feed a little high, not handled. And here comes Rick Soule. Soule with a little bouncer. Still no possession. That'll be a loose ball push going against Pat O'Hara. And possession will go over to Washington College. And Washington College needs any break they can get right now with 9.27 remaining in this game. They trail Hobart 10 to three. O'Hara came up and uh, was a little bit too much on the back side of the players. He pushed him. Had he got around the side, it would have been legal because he was within five yards of the ball. Here comes Washington College. Here comes Rick Soule. Soule driving in. He can shoot with either hand. Prefers his right, however. He'll come back. Comes clear. Has the ball checked away at the last minute. And a good check laid in there. Here comes uh, Sean Fox. Fox had, loses it. Washington College hustling. John Nostrand rolling in, looking for some help. Puts it over to Sol. Sol does not handle on that one, however. And the possession will go back to Hobart. Sol took his eye off the ball, looking toward the crease to see where he was. He wanted to move him for a shot. But one thing he's done the whole game, Bob, he's got great tools, but he constantly waits too long to shoot it. He's had plenty of opportunities to go ahead and shoot, but he waits that second too long and gets double teamed. Washington College now still having trouble clearing the ball. It's been a problem for them all day long. Up to Eric Gehringswald and back to Sol. Sol must uh, still have a lot of problems with his stick at the moment. Now back in quickly to Rick Coat. Over to Tommy Gaines. Gaines is going to draw the penalty. It's a delay call, as we've told you before in the cross, until the ball hits the ground or a shot is taken. And as long as it stays in play, 
Play will continue. Very similar to hockey. Another penalty. And that will be kind of a weak shot. And Washington College will have, I believe, a two-man advantage. We'll wait to see if they call that two-man or a two-minute penalty and one man. We see two men going out, so Washington College will have a two-man advantage. Start off with Tom Gaines in the back working the ball. And, of course, the defenseman came, J.C. Stein, 32. Here's 32. J.C. Stein is a sophomore from Amherst. Came in a little high. Got a little up around the head area. Slash, and, of course, the late penalty gave Washington College a chance to score and also a chance to get another penalty, which they did get. About a thousand fans came up from Chestertown, Maryland, to see their team play. And they haven't had much to cheer about today. It's a long haul. It's about a six-hour drive. At they, least. They oh, yeah, at least. They deserve better. <laughs> it's a six-hour drive. That should, have, that, should, that should have been the halftime talk. <laughs> Waiting to see uh, now. Uh, there seems to be a problem with who's going to be in the box and who isn't. But whatever the call, uh, Washington College will be extra. One minute, two men. Over to Seoul. Seoul over to Walker Taylor. They'll tighten it up in a minute uh, as they pass the ball around once. Back out to Ducar. They're to 2 3 1. Back across to Taylor. Now Taylor cuts down inside of the crease. They'll look for the quick cut. They'll look for the backside feed. Here's Seoul. Seoul roll dodges once. Has the ball checked away. Still no possession. Washington College will get it back. And good hustle by Tommy Gaines. Coming our way, John Nostrand. Nostrand looking out front. Can't find it. Feed, tries to feed the crease. The ball pops high in the air off a defenseman's stick. And knocked out. Comes up with the stick of Dan Dukar. Now back behind to Tommy Gaines. They've got to draw some pressure. Dukar can shoot from there. They put it back out front again. Soul turns and shoots and is knocked down by Warren. They refeed. Reload back behind. Gaines puts it back out front again. Soul feeds it to the side. The shot off the pipe. John Nostrum with a cracker. Hits the pipe. Recovered by Warren. And Washington College. Now Washington College recovers the loose ball. Here comes Dukar. He shoots and scores. A lot of work for that goal. I tell you, no kidding. They deserve a goal. They deserve about three goals. But what great defense Hobart's playing. Keep him out of the goal area. Time and time again, Washington College is playing heads up, getting shot and shot. They must have had seven shots at that time. Finally dead in the nets on somewhat of a broken play. Check seven minutes, really 11 seconds out. remaining in the fourth quarter. We'll see the whole series coming up. Here we go. The ball comes in. You'll see shot. There's the first shot. Off the pipe and then off Chuck Warren, the goalie. Now, this is that third shot they took in this series. Chuck Warren has the ball. Feeds off to his defenseman. Knocked down by Tommy Gaines, who comes around, tries to shovel it in. Now the ball's pushed out front. And that's where Dukar picks it up. Comes in, smacks it off of a defenseman. A 38 actually should get credit. Gordy Sweely. But that's a goal. Makes it 10 to 4. Might be too little too late. Seven minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. It's Hobart 10, Washington College 4. We have a hold call coming up, and possession will go over to Hobart. Change of possession only. Washington College needs a whole lot real quick here. See Billy Bergen there, the only blue pants man on the, on the field. I figured that out unless it's some symbol of something. Bergen's going to have the long run all the way over to the sideline. The wind has been a factor here, and uh, particularly in clearing the ball, the long passes, and also if you've noticed some of uh, some of your picture wobbling slightly, it's uh, our counter positions, two of them in fact, 15 feet up in the air on uh, pedestals, and they're blowing around. We just found out from our producer Joe Harlan that Billy Bergen is in fact wearing hockey pants with the pads in them due to an injury received earlier in the year. So we'll give him dispensation for not wearing the right color. Yeah, I think he got the injury in ice hockey as a matter of fact. Here comes Mike Martin bringing it in. Finds an open man as the defenseman fell down. Lock fell down for Washington College. That allowed Grimaldi to get the ball. Grimaldi pulls out. Gives it over to Jim Holohan. Now to O'Hara. O'Hara a little hop step. Gives it off on the side to Bergen. Back to Regan. Joe Regan, 22 goals and nine assists. Tremendous output. A heck of a year. Dave Yurick keeps him on the bench, doesn't start him, uses him as the fourth man, brings him in fresh as the game gets started. And he and he's out right now as the third leader in stats. Cal Harris draws a triple team, puts it back to Grimaldi. Grimaldi feeds inside. And a few, he's, got, he's got 22 goals and nine assists on the year. He's a smooth ball player, and that time he made a real nice cut again. Hobart time and time again using opportune cuts off the crease to get a feed from behind and dump it in. Let's take a look at Regan. 
He's a senior. Now, watch as he comes in, takes the feed from behind with the whole defense out of position and just pumps it past. See the man behind the goal out of position. Now, watch the defense sliding totally out of position. 77 you see on the crease there, Steve Be Bevel, who actually lost him coming across, probably was doubling it up for another man. But once the defense gets unsettled, if you can move the ball twice in the air, you'll usually get a good shot off. The uh, illegal procedure called. Possession will go over to Washington College now. Six minutes and eight seconds remaining here in the ball game. It's Hobart 11, Washington College 4. And Hobart has led all the way. Led at 1.2 to nothing and then on to 4 to nothing. And they have not, uh, it has not been close since then. Both these teams, again, they're a lot alike because uh, the coach of one played for the other. But it's refreshing, Bob, to see three midfields run for each team. Not a lot of long sticks defense. And a lot of action, a lot of good transition. Shot by John Nostrin, and John Nostrin has his second goal of the day. He has a super shot. He's taken about four or five shots, and two of them have gone in the cage, and Washington College returns, and they only trail by six, 5.59 remaining. Probably too much right now for Washington College. Washington Nostrin, as you mentioned, he has a real good shot. A little bit screened there by the goalie. Chuck Warren couldn't see it, see all the congestion on the crease in front of him. Watch again, he rolls back for his left hand. He just cranks it behind all this congestion, which screens the goalie, and it puts it right into the pipe. Real nice shot. No control on the face off yet. The ball still rolling loose. Picked up by Washington College. Coming back in now, John Nostrin. Nostrin with a good move. Comes left. He can crank from any place. They try to feed the side. Soul does not get to the ball. It's not going to go out of bounds, however, on the long grass. Stays in play. Two Hobart men fighting over it. Finally picked up by Dan Whalen. Quick outlet pass to Scott Zadel. I think the depth of the Hobart team is really showing now about the uh, Washington. If you watch the Washington players, they look a little tired. Soul in particular down there. Ricky Soul used a lot in the first half, and I think it's taking its toll right now. Devin Arkison with the ball. He gets it up to the near side and quickly up to Scott Zadel. Zadel's got clear sailing to the midfield line and an open man in front of him. Right up to Tommy Rosa. Rosa rolling in, does not have anybody cutting the crease, so he'll put it back behind the goal. Cal Harris looking out front. Coming hard front. He'll shoot from there. Instead, tries to give it off on the side. Check late into the last minute. Makes the pass go awry. Still backed up nicely over there by Scott Zadel. Baker out of the goal. Baker has been out of the goal a number of times, and it cost him a goal once earlier in the game. But he has a chance to get back in this time. <laughs> he wanted to go again. Quick beat inside. A nice save by Baker. Super save by Baker. On a shot there by Mark Moore. But Hobart maintains possession. They're keeping the pressure on. Shot wide of the cage. It'll be backed up very nicely by Greg Baker. We've got four minutes and 29 seconds remaining here in the ball game. It's Hobart 11, Washington College 5. Waiting now for the teams to get set up. 429 remaining in the ball game. Being brought up very slowly by Rick Coat. Over to Baker. And Washington College trapped on the sideline. Now they get it up clear up to Russ Locke. He's looking for a little bit of help. Now back out front. Here comes Rick Soule. Soule rolling in. Wants to shoot with his left hand. Has the ball checked away at the last minute. Still no possession. A little pushing and shoving. A little clanking of sticks on the helmets. Overrun by Walker Taylor. Not handled by Arkison. Ball continue to pop up in the air. Fast break coming in. Shot wide of the cage. That time, uh, Mark Van Arsdale did not get the feed. I want to remind you, there's more lacrosse coming your way on home team sports. Catch all the action of Lacrosse International Saturday, June the 9th. First, you'll see Team USA versus Johns Hopkins live at 6 o'clock. Then the U.S. College All-Stars battle it out at 8.30. Live and exclusive from Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. You'll see the best in home team lacrosse right here on home team sports, the channel you cheer for. Waiting now for the uh, ball to be put back and play on the near side with Mark Van Arsdale. As Washington College gets back in, six long sticks. Van Arsdale takes the ball back point behind. Three minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the game. O'Hara wants to crank him there. Shoots a good save in there by Baker. 
Baker looks for the quick outlet. Pass finds it on the far side of Beville. Beville coming across. Has a fast break. Looks for a point man. Does not find it. He'll be pushed out of play to get it back over to Walker Taylor. Taylor back to Tommy Gaines. He doesn't handle. Gaines overruns it now. Tired legs of Washington College beginning to show. Hobart has run three midfields and sometimes four in this game. They've got fresh legs. Here comes O'Hara. O'Hara driving across the top of the box. Looks for some help. Finds a man cutting the crease. And a beautiful save by Baker. Recontrolled by Washington College. Coming up quickly for Washington College. Number 21, Trey D'Ambrosi. Tries to feed a man on the wing. That's Walker Taylor. Throws the ball away and Hobart will regain possession. A little under three minutes remaining in the ball game. It's Hobart 11, Washington College 5, and uh, Coach Dave Urich will join other legends, John Wooden and Rod Godot, as the only coach, only one of three coaches in any team sport in NCAA history to win five straight national titles. Bob? Yeah, Lee. I'm down on the sideline, and I'm going to confirm what we thought about the uh, Washington team. They're a little bit tired. They come off the field real winded, getting, trying to get up low on the sideline and get back in to see some action. Long clearing pass, a beautiful clearing pass upfield as they feed right across the top of the box to Cal Harris. They feed inside, and a good shot and taken in there by number 25, Billy Kerr. And Billy Kerr has his first goal today. And now Hobart is just becoming a track meet at this point. Hobart outrunning Washington College, running three midfields, sometimes four midfields. And uh, we'll see it again. The quick feed inside. And Kerr just cranks it over Baker as he was in good shooting range right in front of the cage. 2.28 remaining in the ballgame. Hobart now leads 12 to 5. And Washington College will have to wait till next year. And now goalie Chuck Warren comes out of the game. He has played a sensational game in the goal. He's made some really key saves. And they give him a well-deserved round of applause here in Geneva. We'll see who the new goalie is going to be. We believe it'll be Jim Hannon, number three, a sophomore, 6'1", 175 from Garden City, Long Island. Bob, don't forget that there was a big question mark at the beginning of the year in the goal because Van Arnsdale was a three-time All-American. He graduated, and they weren't so sure that this man could fill his shoes. He's done a heck of a job this season, I'll say that, and an outstanding job today. Baker, Greg Baker certainly has done a fine job, too, but he did not have all the support that... Hobart gave to their goalie. Baker making some sensational saves, some acrobatic saves. But Hobart, just too many horses here today for Washington College. And Washington College certainly had a great season. Just getting to the final is, uh, is worth noting. And they did that for the second time in the last three years. Out of bounds once again, and Hobart will go back on offense. Terry Corker a little frustrated down here on the sideline, pointing out to his team that things that are just here you hear me yelling on the sideline think they're just doing things that they're too tired they're making mistakes that they're just too tired to compensate for just don't have again the numbers to match that hobart team it's just like a military machine they keep pumping players in they change in wholesale units they change a whole defensive unit at a time a whole attack unit at a time they're certainly skilled but they're skilled all the way down along the bench now we see greg baker coming out of the game and going to the game number 43 larry boehm the sophomore six feet 150 from deer park long island and Greg Baker, this crowd, uh, even though partisan through most of the game, crowd that displays great sportsmanship, giving Greg Baker a real good hand, and he certainly deserved it. We see Hobart now moving the ball back down on attack. They try to feed across. A lot of new faces in the lineup now for Hobart. On attack, number 14, Mike Baventura. Baventura, and also on attack, number 37, that's Rick Graham. As they throw the ball out of bounds, it'll go back over to Washington College. You know, Bob, even though this is the fifth year they've won the championship, you they don't like any enthusiasm. You would think it was the first time ever. They're really charged up and, and excited about this victory today. Well, five straight championships have eluded a lot of the great teams. They've eluded uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. It may be eluding the New York uh, Islanders, but it's not going to elude uh, Hobart here today. Because we've got one minute and 21 seconds remaining here in the ballgame. And Hobart in a commanding lead 12 to 5. Hobart now trying to clear the ball. Rick Kodal is going to try to bring it up. Gives it over to his new goalie in the game, Larry Bohem. And up to Belleville. Quick feet inside. Not handled. A little push from behind. Russ Luck knocked down. And that will be a loose ball push. We're going to see that. That's going to be a technical foul called. And Washington College will have an extra man opportunity. Go, 
Bob, yeah, they've just called. Penalty. Yeah. I'm sorry. They've just called in. The Hobart team wants to keep the team in there. They're making only one substitution. They want to keep the team. Well, now I see three going in, but the initial call was to keep the same guys in there, let them run out the string, and then run out the extra, the man down situation. We've got 59 seconds remaining here in the game. Washington College will be extra for 30 seconds of that. See if they can put one score on the board here. Get back to within uh, six. Washington College throwing it around the outside. They're setting up in a 2-3-1. The ball will go point behind. They'll cut two men down inside looking for an opening on the crease. They put it back out front. So shoots it. A nice save inside. And here comes Hobart. They've got a fast break going. And the pass missing the side goes out of bounds. And Washington College will get possession again. Washington College uh, had an outstanding season, really. They lost to this Hobart team earlier in the year, 13-8. Bob, they came up here with great down. expectations. Yeah, Lee. I'm sorry. He, you know, I talked about how they make wholesale changes. Dave Yurick keeps everybody fresh. He has a whole defensive unit he puts in. He calls them the wild team. The first unit comes out, he puts the wild team in. And it's sort of like the blue team in the ACC basketball North Carolina squad. He gives the whole unit a fresh start. Let's go in there and go crazy, be aggressive for about maybe three, four minutes, and then puts his regulars back in. So the Wild Bunch is in right now. The Wild Bunch, eh? Okay. <laughs> wild team, actually. They <laughs> Washington College still having trouble clearing the ball. We're down to 21 seconds remaining in the game. That pass picked off. And we have a whistle call. It's going to be an offside going against, uh, we believe, Washington College. Now we see now that's why it's an offside against Hobart, and Washington College will gain possession. Fans still cheering here, Lally, as time counts down. We're inside uh, 20 seconds. Got a close look at Bergen's pants, Bob. They're just like you talked about. Pads on the front of the thighs. Long feet across the sole. Sole tries his left hand. Has the ball poked away. You'll hear the countdown. And so it's five straight. NCAA Division III championships for Hobart College. And a nice gesture there. Coach Dave Yurick, who coached Terry Corcoran, shakes his hand. And uh, what can you say about Hobart College? They dominate Division III lacrosse and probably will for a number of years after. They have a fairly young team themselves. And they win this game 12 to 5. And a good look at the Hobart team. They have earned this victory today as they earned their place in this championship game. They have now won 41 straight Division III lacrosse games. Well, you can see it on the cameras right there. They're pretty proud of it. Number five. Holding it up. Each one becomes tougher. We talked about winning a championship before. It's tough to win a championship. It's even tougher to repeat. Stay tuned. We'll be back with a post-game show in just a minute. Fighters aren't born. They're made the hard way. By facing adversity head-on and not backing down. The fighting spirit. See it up close with a ticket to the Washington Federals. Call today. Sunday afternoon, May 20th at 2.30, the Federals face the San Antonio Gunslingers. I'd sure like another Strohs. No way. Alex? Two cold Strohs. <laughs> Where do you see this? Just open the refrigerator. Just open one bottle. Just open the other. Now he's pouring yours. Now he's pouring mine. Alex, you better be drinking your water. <laughs> From one beer lover to another strose. You're listening to the presentation of the most valuable player trophy. And we're not quite sure. As much as I hate the thought of bringing...
Mr. Paul Doherty.
turn. 